that's you. Wow. Yes. My mouse upstairs does it's not. No, it's just right. the right. right. nothing. We got a majority. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just now nine. <laughs> yeah, clock's wrong. Well, it's better than it was. Somebody on, fixed baby. it. Yeah. That wasn't too good. Good morning. Welcome to the land use meeting of April 7th, 2016. We appreciate all of you being with us this morning. I know. Um, a couple of quick things. The Pledge of Public Conduct. This is for the public as well as the commission. We may disagree, but we will be respectful of one another. We will direct all comments to issues, and we will avoid personal attacks. At this time, if you would, make sure your cell phones are turned off. Um, so that it will not, your cell phone will not disturb the meeting. And at this time, I would like to introduce uh, and have the invocation by the Reverend Sam Rayner of West Bradenton Baptist Church. If you will pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time as a community together. Lord, I pray that uh, you will be honored. And Lord, I just ask for growth for this community, for those who have just moved here like me will, as I do, find a place that they love. Lord, I pray for peace here in this community, um, that us as citizens will do well and do right. And Lord, I pray for justice, that what is well and right will be done here. And Lord, I just thank you uh, for the joy of living here in Manatee County and uh, we ask these things for this council today. In your name, Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Still have Commissioner Chappie. Not here. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. We have nothing, no time certain. Um, Madam, uh, do we have any changes to the agenda? No changes or additions at this time. All right, then we'll go ahead and move forward um, to awards, presentations, and proclamations. We do have one today. Motion to approve. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion to approve and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. No, sorry, that was not me. <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is passed unanimously. Crime, rights, Crime Victims' Rights Week, April 10th through the 16th. Commissioner DeSabatino. Anybody checking on the chat? Let's, I just asked Carol. She's going to go, I think. Call, okay. Somebody call. All right. Need to find out where he is. Oh, he's moving. Thank you all for being here today and uh, representing your community and all you do for us and everyone that serves in this community is honored that you are a part of this community. And it's my honor to read the Crime Victims' Rights Week proclamation. It's a long one and very well deserved. Whereas Americans are the victims of more than 20 million crimes each year, and crime can touch the lives of anyone regardless of age, national origin, race, creed, religion, gender, sexual orientation, immigration, or economic status, many of whom face challenges in finding appropriate services. And whereas too many communities feel disconnected from the justice and social response systems and have lost trust in the ability of those systems to recognize them and respond to their needs. And whereas victims of repeat victimization who fail to receive supportive services are at greater risk for long-term consequences of crime, and whereas the victim services community has worked for decades to create an environment for victims that is safe, supportive, and effective, and whereas intervening early with services that support and empower victims provide a pathway to recovery from crime and abuse, and whereas honoring the rights of victims, including the right to be heard and to be treated with fairness, dignity, and respect, and working to meet their needs rebuilds their trust in the criminal justice and social service systems, which restores hope to victims and survivors as well as their communities. And whereas National Crime Victims Rights Week, April 10th through 16, 2016, 
is an appropriate time to commit to ensuring that all victims of crime, even those who are challenging to reach or serve, are offered culturally and linguistically accessible and appropriate services in the aftermath of crime, and whereas Manatee Victims Rights Council is dedicated to serving victims, building trust, and restoring hope for justice and healing, now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that April 10th through 16, 2016, shall be known, designated, and set aside as Crime Victims' Rights Week in Manatee County, Florida, reaffirming the county's commitment to creating a victim service and criminal justice system that assists all victims of crime during the, this week and throughout the year, and to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation for those community members victim service providers, and criminal justice professionals who are committed to improving our response to all victims of crime so that they may find relevant assistance, support, justice, and peace. Adopted with a quorum present, voting the 7th day of April 2016, signed by our chair and attest, Angel Colonesso, Clerk of the Court. Thank you. On behalf of the Manatee Victims' Rights Council and the victims in Manatee County and the victim service providers, I'd like to thank you for this proclamation. Also, I would like to say that this is our 31, 31st year that Manatee Victims' Rights Council has hosted their candlelight vigil for National Crime Victims' Rights Week. This year, we're doing something a little different. We're bringing in a guest speaker from the East Coast. He is an author of a book. His name is Patrick Knight. He wrote the book, Blessed Survival, the Thanksgiving Day Massacre. He is an, a, an attorney and a motivational speaker all over the, the world. Uh, our national theme is re, um, building trust and restoring hope. You'd think I'd know that by now, sorry. And that's my goal, and I hope the other victim survivors, the victim survivors and um, our victim service providers, that's our goal to do for the crime victims in Manatee County. We'd like to invite you to come to the vigil. It is Monday, April 11th at 6.30 at River Life Church on Morgan Johnson Road. Um, we have flyers out, and uh, I think it's going to be a great event. At that time, we're also going to have uh, Colonel Rick Wells. He will be doing a, a little, little bit on uh, fallen officers. We're going to have a memorial for them as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and, and do know that I know I will be there, and I'm sure that other commissioners will as well. So awesome. thank you for thank doing you this. Thank you so much. Commissioner Bennett. Yeah, and I just want to tell you thank you also for being there um, for people when they need you the most. I think that's extremely important, and so we appreciate the work that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's sombering. Moving forward, um, do we have any items to be pulled from the consent agenda, commissioners? All right. Well, I'm not hearing any. Um, so we'll go into citizen comments. I do not have any cards uh, this morning. Is there anyone from the public that would like to come forward and speak on the agenda items, which um, it's only item three? Not seeing any. We'll close public comment. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner DeSabatino, a second by Commissioner Whitmore. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. It is the consent agenda is approved unanimously. Thank you, commissioners. We don't have any advisory board appointments. All right, we'll go right into public hearings. Um, would you like to read the item into record? Excuse Nicole? Me, Chairman Ball, unless I need to swear. Where I went in? Actually, I have that on the next um, <laughs> going down the list, but go ahead. <laughs> Just in case someone wants to speak. Okay. <laughs> Anyone wishing to address the board during this public <coughs> hearing? Please stand by and uh, administer the oath. Get here with the door here. <laughs> and to you swear or affirm that the factual statements mm -hmm. and factual representations which are about to present to this board will be truthful and accurate. 
The applicant is entitled to 15 minutes for presentation and five minutes for a rebuttal. Individuals may speak for three minutes and anyone representing a group or organization of five or more members may speak for 10 minutes. If you represent a group, please state the group you represent and provide written authority to speak on behalf of the group. When you step to the podium, please state your name and whether or not you've been sworn. Thank you. All right, moving right along now. Nicole, would you read uh, the item into record, please? Sure. Item number four, PDI 1501P, which is Amstel Storage Ventures Compass Self Storage, and they're requesting to be continued to May 5th, 2016. Do we need a motion? Yes, a motion yes. to continue. Okay. All right, we're going to. Got it. <laughs> I'm not sure my job here. It. Yeah, it's like, okay. You got six bosses. Y'all keep, yes, I seem to. I can't keep up with all of you in the ears. I'm going to go ahead at this time and open it to public comment. Anyone from the public that would like to come forward and speak on this item, please do so. No one is uh, from the public's coming forward, so we'll go ahead and cl uh, close public comment. Pleasure of the board, please. Move to continue this item to May 5th, 2016. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Whitmore, second by Commissioner Smith. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. It is unanimously approved. All right, number five. Number five, PDR 1513ZP, Manasara Corp, Tennessee Street Property LLC, the Oasis at University. They are also being uh, requested to continue to May 5th, 2016. All right, at this time, I'll go ahead and open it to public comment. Anyone from the public like to come forward and speak on this item? Not seeing anyone, public com oh my gosh. comment is closed. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I have a question for our attorney. I had sent an email regarding this item um, before I, I knew it was going to be deferred. And uh, so I believe staff forwarded it to the applicant, so it'll be on record when we bring it back up next month, correct? Yes, we'll enter that into the back of when we have the public okay. hearing the merits. Okay. Pleasure of the board, please. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner D. Sabatino, second by Commissioner Whitmore. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> it is unanimously approved. Moving down the list. Item number six. Item number six, PDR 1520ZG, which is Vistas Equity Group LLC, Trademark Building Company, Inc., Kilnani Parish Subdivision, a request to rezone of approximately 29 and a half acres on the north side of CR 675, also known as Rutland Road, east of US 301, and commonly known as 12450 CR 675, a request from A1 to PDR and approving a general development plan for 84 single family residential units. Margaret, do you want to take it from there? This item is presentations upon, upon request. request. Uh, do we have a request? That's unbelievable. Thank you. All right, things are like too simple this morning. What's going on here? Don't say it out loud. That means they gave us enough information. <laughs> Evidently. Good briefings, I guess. Yeah. All right. They always do. Well, we'll go ahead and open this to public comment. Anyone from the public like to come forward, speak on this item? Not seeing anyone. We'll go ahead and close public comment. May I um, have? I do have one. Ahead. I do have one question for staff. Um, I probably just missed it in, in reading my material. It said it. Uh, there are private streets, and um, are they built to county standard widths? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then I just had um, concerns while I was reading it about who pays for the sewer extent, hookups and extension, and it says the applicant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm fine. Thank you. Since this is quasi-judicial, I'm going to go ahead and ask, has there been any ex parte communication? No. no. All right. Gosh. Um, the applicant, would you like to come forward and make any comments? Uh, Will Robinson, on behalf of the applicant, I have been sworn. We have no presentation unless any commissioners have any questions. Moving right on down. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Will. All right. Well, we'll go ahead then. We've had public comment. Any cl Anything staff would like to add? <coughs> I'm sure I move the recommended motion. Thank you. Second. 
have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Bussell, second by Commissioner DiSabatino. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. <clears throat> it is approved unanimously. Thank you. Item number seven. Number seven, Plan Amendment 1503, Ordinance 1620, formerly known as 1535, 301 Oxford LLP. It's an adoption of a plan amendment from OM, Office Medium, Future Land Use Category, to ROR and Res 12, Future Land Use Categories. All right, this is a legislative hearing. So does anyone um, want a briefing? None in favor, no? Um, I did, yes, ma'am? I did have um, just a question for staff, and I know this is on presentation, so there was going to be a presentation, and I don't, I don't necessarily need a full presentation. But I, I did have a question for staff under, um, trying to scope through my staff report as quick as I can. Under the ROR um, intent, I, I just have a question for staff about the reading of that intent language. I brought this up at the last hearing, and I just want to make sure um, staff and I are on the same page. Where are you looking? Um, it is under the comprehensive plan policy, um, okay. ROR. I'm trying to, you know, my computer was not working this morning, so it's being very slow. So I'm trying to scope down. Staff report. Staff report, okay. ROR, intent language, when it says, and I read it last night, but it will not come up with that. I have it, ma'am. Okay. It's if on you could read the intent language. Page. It's on your page 82. 82. Is that how I look at it? Page 82 of 232, is that how y'all find it? No, we, ours are like 12 of 19. Okay, so, so four of 19. Four? Four of 19. Four of 19. Right. Kind of in the middle of the page, or at the beginning of the page. Hmm. Is it on? Okay. Okay. The intent of the ROR designation is to identify textually in the comprehensive plan's goals, objectives, and policies, or graphically on the future land use map, areas which are established and developed which are established and developed, exhibiting a broad range of commercial, residential, and in certain cases, light industrial uses, and to recognize the continued existence of such areas through the long-range planning time frame. Yeah, and that, that was the policy that was giving me some pause, because it says established and developed. And I'm, I've been around forever, as you know. <laughs> you were pretty old. <laughs> But interestingly enough, I'm not the oldest person on the board. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I've been around Sec in the, you're the uh, youngest. I think we're the youngest. Around in planning for a long time. And that was the that was the policy that was that was, this was the language that was giving me a pause because I remember when we adopted the comprehensive plan and the ROR standards were created for areas that were established and developed. This is not an area that's developed. So I just wanted to hear staff say that they feel that it is consistent with a comprehensive plan before I vote on it. Hmm. Yes, we do think that it is. But when you say area is not developed, you mean this particular piece of property? I do. Oh, OK. Now, this property isn't developed, but around it is developed. Right. right. And, and I understand that there's going to be transition in this area. But our comprehensive plan, when it was adopted, was set up to create areas for future commercial, mm -hmm. which were generally located at intersections of two thoroughfares. And ROR was created, in my recollection, and that's why I asked staff, to accommodate areas that were already previously developed. Kind of, you know, before, back before our comp plan, we had a lot of areas along major corridors that were developed for commercial. So that was my concern about this comp plan, so I wanted to state that for the record. Okay. Would you like a presentation on this? Nope. Just okay. wanted to ask that question. Do you want to answer? No. Yes. Yeah, by staff. They feel it is. Just did. Staff answered it. answered it. wasn't sure. Really. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I wasn't sure either. I mean, could I, Madam Chair, could I get yes. a little clarity to it? I wasn't. Go ahead. The answer is, is that it is? I mean, it wasn't. Well, clarified to me of the question. Well, I have to say that, you know, I wasn't around when the comprehensive plan was adopted, and I'm making a note to look at Working. what the intent of ROR was. I didn't, you know, um, I've been a planner for a long time, not that long in Manatee County, but, you know, uh, 
recognizing areas for future development is also an important function of comprehensive planning. So the fact that this area isn't currently developed, I mean, all around it is certainly developed into it to place the ROR land use category on this portion of the property does make planning sense because of the areas where it hasn't really developed um, commercially along there, but there's lots of residential development of different densities <coughs> and intensities. So having this opportunity to provide commercial and or office uses in this <coughs> area does make, um, does adhere to planning principles. If I may, I'm, uh, we apologize. We're having some difficulty this morning. Um, Sarah oh, Shang. Yeah, Madam Chair, I had one comment. It's not specific to this location, but since you brought up RR, I'm not providing competence financial evidence because I'm the attorney, not the planner. But I happen to know that we, one of the properties we have in a pending litigation matter, so I won't mention location, is undeveloped, and it's an RR, future lands classification. But it does have wetlands on it. So that's a little bit interesting. So there is property with RR in the county with nothing on it. It might have nothing oh, on it because no, there's no, that there. No, I'm talking about because we have a comprehensive plan application before us, and we're trying to determine whether or not it's appropriate to apply the ROR future land use category to this. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading from the comprehensive plan when that's appropriate, mm -hmm. you know, and what the ROR was intended for. So like I said, my recollection is a little bit different. Yeah. Because I, w I was here back when the comp plan was initially adopted. I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad or good thing here in this location, and that's a decision that we all have to make. But I, I've been struggling with this because of that, because of my background and being here for a long time and remembering when the ROR category was established. I'd have to consider that. So, it, yeah, certainly we've got plenty of ROR. I mean, I don't know about plenty. But we have some ROR that is vacant mm -hmm. in the county. That, that's not the question to me. The question is when is it appropriate to designate a vacant site today ROR? That's the question I'm struggling with. When you're building all around it. And I have no problem with the Res 12, but um, I, the ROR was giving me some pause. So. Sorry, I feel like I missed all that with everything going on up here. Um, any other commissioner comments? Uh, and, and this is a legislative item. It's, it's right. not quasi-judicial, so it's up to the pleasure of the board mm -hmm. Correct. to make the policy change. Correct. I'm going to go ahead at this point. I don't have anyone else on the board. I'm going to open this to public comment. Any, anyone from the public want to come forward and speak on this item? Not seeing anyone. We'll close public comment. Is the pleasure of the board. Well, I... Things are changing all the time, and mm -hmm. you know, and things are transitioning out there. And I'm one of the ones who kind of fight a little bit of the, the change, but in yeah. this instance, mm -hmm. I'm rolling with it. It makes sense. The whole area is transitioning, and I'll support it. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner De Sabatino, a second by Commissioner Chappie. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. It is nay. Told you, I, I just, yeah. I, just when we establish, an, uh, well, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why, because it is legislative, and I've been struggling with this, because I agree that we need more commercial out in this area. Mm -hmm. The problem is that when you establish a new ROR in an area with, that is, it says also to establish a few major and highly accessible, but currently undeveloped sites for development of major future community or regional serving commercial uses. I don't think this site is highly accessible. I don't think it's highly accessible. I think it's mid-block. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know that I'm kind of out on a limb here, but, you know, that's, that's what happens when you have been in planning for a long time. You might um, see things just slightly differently, and this is our long-range plan, and we need to decide what we think is going to set the best trend for this area of the county. I have some concerns about the RRR. As I said, I didn't have concerns about the REST 12. I think we do need higher densities. But I think the lack of accessibility to this site, to me, gives, gives me concern. So I'm, that's why I'm voting against it. Mm -hmm. All right. For the record, the vote was 6 to 1 with Commissioner Benack uh, dissenting. Um, Commissioner Smith. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, um, I may have to reconsider my vote. <laughs> she should have said just before I voted. <laughs> that's why I kept uh, asking for dialogue. Um, certainly, I don't want to create another issue in the county that we don't have to create. 
Uh, maybe I need more information on there, but I want to reconsider my vote on it um, based on what um, Commissioner Benack just stated. I wish you had stated it before I supported the, the motion. I tried to be clear yeah. why I was that So concerned. I want to reconsider my vote, certainly, until I get more information to make sure we're not creating a, uh, a, a situation in Manatee County that we may have to address financially later. Hmm. All right, so before if, if that's on the record, then the Commissioner Smith was on the prevailing side. He had to make a motion to reconsider. How do I switch my vote if I fail? Well, that's what you have to do. You have to I so move to, um, to reconsider. And then he's a second, somebody? And... I'll second it so, so he can reconsider. Okay. All right, we have a motion to reconsider by Commissioner Smith, second by Commissioner DeSabatino. Um, um, before we vote, we do have some commissioners on the board for discussion. Hmm. Yeah, my reconsideration is for this basically let me get more information. I'm not prepared to support them this way. Well, moment. at this point, we need to just rescind the vote that was made and, and then move forward. Commissioner Whitmore. Uh, the meetings I've been to in North County and Parish are begging for this. I just, I'm surprised that, uh, and all of us have been at those meetings, and I haven't heard and we've actually come back to these many Indians and said, oh, my God, it's the first time we've been in the county and they're all begging for this kind of use. So that's what I was looking at. And all the, the uses that are going to be on this property, it's going to help feed them and keep them off the road. So totally it makes sense. And these people in these subdivisions where there's no infrastructure except the Publix and the little shopping center there are begging for it. And I've been to parish community uh, meetings, and it's like so refreshing because they actually want us to bring businesses to them. So I support Can I'm, the motion. Point of order. A motion to reconsider is not debatable. Well, she, I oh, was on the board. And she knows me. Good for you. Thank you for bringing your rules with you. No, he knows well, That being said, we'll have to wait then on any other comments by commissioners. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh. I'm sorry, raise your hands, please. For the reconsideration? For the reconsideration. You can support well, you don't, it. you don't need to vote on it. Is that what you said? I thought motion you did. to reconsider. Oh, vote. Vote. Consideration. But it's yes. not debatable, he said. Got it. Right. Oh. All right, let's do this again. And please raise your hands. All in favor of the reconsideration, raise your hands. For courtesy to the commissioner, I will. All right, mm -hmm. that's four votes, so it will be reconsidered. All right, here we go. Commissioner Bussell? Well, we, I guess now we have to, to re vote on the. I would suggest yes. we, we, we need to, I think, probably. Okay, well, I want to discuss the, we'll discuss the, the, the original yeah. motion. Yeah, I need See, you spoke too soon. And yeah, evidently. <laughs> it's always the easiest. Way. Commissioner DiSabatino, did you have anything? Uh, yeah, I, I echo what Commissioner Whitmore said about uh, the folks out in this area asking for um, more services out there, and I totally understand that. You know, it's a developing area, and um, so, and I, I uh, defer to the prior knowledge of Commissioner Benack, but... Um, <coughs> I, I'm still going to vote in favor of this project because you have a lot of residential across the street, down the street, other businesses, and they need um, they need support uh, facilities out there. So, I and then perhaps um, we need to workshop some of the old things moving forward when we're progress. doing our um, comp plan changes and land development plans and so forth. So we need to make we can add this to a workshop. Yeah, um, I agree with what Commissioner De Sabatino said. I mean, I, I know I hear from people out in that area all the time begging for uh, commercial to come oh. out that way. So, <clears throat> Commissioner Bennett. Yeah, and I'm glad you gave us opportunity, and I think I need to be clear, and I, I feel bad that I'm influencing vote with something I said after the vote, so I, I'm glad we have an opportunity to discuss this. I want to be clear. We have received letters regarding a rezone on this property. The objection that we have received primarily has been to the multifamily that's proposed. And as we know, we don't have a rezone in front of us. This is a comp plan amendment. So I want to make it clear, that was not where my objection was coming from. My objection is a technicality kind of objection, and that's why I think it's in, but when we're dealing with a comprehensive plan, the big picture for our county 
that's why it has been giving me a little bit of stomach problems because when you do a legislative decision, I think you're making it clear to the community what it is you expect to see in the comprehensive plan. And that's why I'm, when I'm reading the ROR intent and it talks about areas that were developed or have major and highly accessible but currently undeveloped, I see it slightly differently. And so I'm doing this from a technicality. Whether or not this is the best use for this particular parcel of property, that's a decision that we all have to make. I haven't been convinced of that, but I think that's the, ap um, the applicant's uh, responsibility, I think, in a comprehensive plan amendment. I think they do deserve an opportunity to do that. Um, I certainly have heard many people asking for commercial out in the area. The question is, where is the best place to have that commercial? You know, this site is already designated for office, so it's going to have office if, it, if it's left the way it is. The question is, is it, should it be the change to the ROR? So I want to be clear about where I'm coming from. I think, um, you know, staff has heard me. Um, I'm glad Kathleen's here because she was around, I think, when the comprehensive plan was written. So maybe they can convince me that, that um, this is not going to be something that is going to be uh, that, that I should have concerns about from a legislative standpoint for the county. Commissioner Bussell. I really have to tell you, I, I don't understand this, a technicality. Uh, and, and I'm also confused by Commissioner Whitmore. You had a perfect argument for why we ought to approve this, and then and yet you voted well, to I'm reconsider. Well, I'm going to vote for it again. But I want to do it as a courtesy yeah, to my we're, commissioner. Yeah, but we're having all this discussion, and we don't need to. Well, I just want to give my commissioner uh, 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 courtesy. That's all. I'm going to vote wait. for it. Larry. I don't understand the, the comment that this is not on a, on a maximum access route or whatever that was you said, because it's right on 301. Mm -hmm. uh, what more access could you have than directly on a, on a state highway? Commissioner Whitmore. And um, Larry, I'm totally supporting it. Uh, it's a per perfect infill. Mm -hmm. And you look everywhere, you drive there, there is no, there's nothing, I mean, yeah, you can have offices, big deal. You need to have uh, some commercial space for all that these homes are, and they're begging it. They're begging for it. So I'm going to 100% support it. Well, I, I voted the way I did, to, courtesy as my fellow commissioner, at least let there be dialogue, but I will support it. Well, there was an opportunity earlier to, for a presentation, so mm -hmm. at any rate. Commissioner Chappie. Um, just a clarification on my point of order. I apologize. I was, I was off just a little bit, which <laughs> um, uh, could have been significant, but no harm, order. no file. So we need a point well, of order for your point right, of Right, right. Okay. Uh, it is not debatable uh, if the motion to which it applies was undebatable. The motion that would have applying to, which was the, this discussion we're having now, is clearly debatable. So I apologize for that. Right. Um, I was just reading it very clear. Quickly. You know what? We, we had a... But no harm, no file we, on we it. We had a rough starting this morning. We had a couple of commissioners that were stuck in traffic and so forth, so we had a hard time getting started and our computers haven't been great. But at this point, let's take a deep breath and, and get back where we need to be here in this meeting so we can move forward. It's only fair to the public and the business people that are here. Commissioner Smith. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My, my um, motion was basically for more dialogue uh, and discussion. Uh, hastily, I supported the motion and may have should have needed a presentation to have clarity. Certainly the residents in parish are, are looking for different venues to uh, have places where they can shop. Uh, uh, my, my concern was the fact that um, what we were talking about and what the commissioner mentioned, I needed more information concerning it. Uh, saying that, um, I may yield to the district commissioner if he's in support of this. Uh, I just want to make sure that in the future that um, me as this commissioner here uh, may need to more have presentations and don't take it for granted that you don't need one. No, we didn't. Well, it was us. Yeah, it was us. That's why I'm saying that. Uh, a presentation probably would have helped me a little more. So um, that's what I had to say, Madam Chair. That's my comment. I appreciate that. Commissioner Bussell. <coughs> My understanding is the motion is on the table at this point in time, and we're in discussion on the motion. No, there is no the motion, motion on the make floor. Another one we've we've, we just we've voted already voted for, for the reconsideration, so now we have to move we'll forward. Need a motion. Yeah. Redo right, your motion. Yeah. You reconsider, don't you? Go back to the motion that was that you're reconsidering. 
uh, understanding I, is that you do. The, the, the motion that was, that was approved now is up for reconsideration. So it's that motion is that, the that needs to be reconsidered. In, that, in that, that motion. Yes, but you can get into the details of it. I mean, because that's I, what our, our decision that, was based on. And I'd ask for a reading from the, from the staff on the parliamentary procedure here, because my understanding is the motion is still on the table, the original motion, and we're right. in discussion on it. Right, right. That's all I was saying. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. No, and I was agreeing with you. Um, okay, so in, in view of that, I don't understand why there's an objection to ROR because, you know, we're, we're always looking for a diversification of, you know, they're talking about uh, residences behind this, mm -hmm. commercial or some, some ROR type activity on the front side. And that's exactly what we've been advocating just about every time we, we meet. So uh, I'm certainly in favor of the original motion. So if I may. Um County Attorney, we still can, we still, the motion that we did previously and voted on is still there. Is that correct? The new one. Yes, but if you want to re reopen the public hearing to receive testimony from staff or the applicant, it's your prerogative to do so. Okay. Am I to gather that that's what this commission wants to see? We want to have a presentation. No. We are sticking with the motion that we had before. Is that correct? Madam Chair. Yes. It's my understanding, Commissioner Smith would like a presentation. He wants further clarification. Is that correct? I think he just changed his mind. Um, Madam, Madam Chair, um, based on what I've just heard, uh, I do not need a presentation. That's what I thought. Um, I would like to move forward, and I, but I do think we need a new motion. Okay. Commissioner Benack. Um, well, again, I just because I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote the same way. I want to be entirely clear so everybody understands why I'm voting that way. Because this is a comprehensive plan amendment and I have to look at the ROR and it says specifically to identify on the future land use map areas which are established and developed areas exhibiting. No other future land use category says that. Exhibiting a broad range of commercial residential, certain cases light industrial. Also to provide an orderly transition from these areas and develop multiple areas. And then it says, and to establish at a few major and highly accessible, but currently undeveloped sites for development of major future community or regional serving commercial, commercial uses. In my mind, highly accessible means that you have accessibility from a side street in addition, just like we have commercial locational criteria where it's at the intersection of two major thoroughfares. This is not at the intersection. So my understanding of ROR is it was a category that was established to recognize where we quite frankly had strip commercial before and to recognize that and to grant that to con continue. But moving forward, we were going to establish commercial at intersections. That's my problem with this. I'm being totally clear why I, had, why I voted the way I did. Um, we've elected not to have any feedback from staff or the applicant at this time, so I'm not going to change my vote, but that's why I'm voting the way I am. All right. Let me make sure I understand then. We are going to stick with the motion that we've already voted on, or Madam Clerk, we don't have another motion on the floor, do we? It's hard to keep up. The motion, okay. a point of order, the way I understand it, the motion that was approved mm -hmm. is, uh, is now up for reconsideration. So, so it is the again. original motion that is on the floor currently, okay. the one that passed. So it's up for reconsideration. And Madam Clerk, would you read that motion for us again, please? Yes, ma'am. Based upon the evidence presented, comments made at the public hearing, the technical support documents, the action of the Planning Commission, and finding the request to be consistent with the Community Planning Act, as codified in applicable portions of Chapter 163, Part 2, Florida Statutes, and the Manatee County Comprehensive Plan. I move to adopt Plan Amendment PA-15-03 slash Ordinance 16-20 as recommended by the Planning Commission. Madam Chair? Yes. I think it would, it's important to state who made that motion and the second. Who made the second? Madam Clerk. For the record. The motion was moved by Commissioner DiSabatino and seconded by uh, Commissioner Chappie, and it carried six to one with Commissioner Benack voting nay due to the site not being highly accessible and concerns with the ROR designation. All right, with that being said, we have a motion on the floor. 
So all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. It is a six to one approval with Commissioner Benek dissenting. Moving forward. That was like pulling teeth. I'm telling you, not a way to start the day. Sometimes you gotta say No, that was good. It was a good discussion. I'm, I'm very informative. It's my job. <coughs> Absolutely. I didn't mean that in a negative way. I really didn't. Well, it's, I don't actually, know. I like the communication. I don't know. It's good. Thank you. Yeah. Some of us don't feel. We learn. It's no, we learn. It's about causing a problem with others, too. I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> and you got to do what. And Madam Chair, if I may comment, that, that's one of the nice things I enjoy about uh, having Commissioner Banak on here because of her experience in the land development regulations. We don't always agree, but it's important that we have these discussions. And you know what? That's a good point. We are, and we're not supposed to always agree. We're supposed to vote the way we feel it should be individually. So that's why there are seven of us. Moving forward, number eight. Um, go ahead. <laughs> Item number eight, Plan Amendment 1503, Ordinance 1621, Capital Improvements Element Annual Update, which is an adoption of an ordinance providing for the amendments to the capital improvement element and updating the schedule of improvements. Good morning, Kathleen Thompson for staff. <laughs> what we have before you is a corrective document. Uh, you actually adopted this in December. And when it was getting ready for distribution, our agenda coordinator noticed that I left out some data. <laughs> Uh, table 10, <coughs> 2, 3, and 4 has the prior year's numbers. It didn't get carried forward. <coughs> and the locational maps were correct in the staff report, but not in the ordinance. So this has been corrected, and I hope you approve it today. Because <laughs> we're in trouble if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we'll get out early today. <laughs> there we I go. don't know. Don't tell yeah. that. I <laughs> 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 would. <laughs> so I'm looking for approval, please. <laughs> Uh, before we do that, does do any of the commissioners want a presentation on this? I think she just gave it. Yeah, well, not really, but I just have a question. Here we go. Just want to make sure nothing's being changed. This is all just basically almost like a Scribner's error, right? We're just right. correcting it. We're not doing Scribner's anything. Big Scribner's error. Okay. Big yes. big Scribner's. Right. That's what yeah. I thought. Huge. Okay. I just wanted Sorry. that for the record. Yes. Yes. Kathleen, you were <laughs> lucky today. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead at this point and open it up to public comment. Does anyone from the public want to come forward and speak on this item? <laughs> All right, not seeing anyone. We'll close public comment. What is the pleasure of the board? To approve. Second. Do you think we should? No, I'm oh, just teasing. <laughs> Hold on, Kathleen. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. We have a motion to approve <laughs> by Commissioner De Sabatino, second by Commissioner Chappie. Oh, All in oh, favor say nice. aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. It is hey. unanimously Ooh, approved. Thank you very much. <laughs> Covered yourself, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kathleen. Oh, fun, fun. All right. <clears throat> Next we have... My Attorneys. That's what we have. Uh, proposed settlement agreement. Mr. Plague. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. For the record, I am Assistant County Attorney Bill Clegg, and I'm here with my colleague, Chief Litigator Chris DiCarlo, to present to you this settlement agreement and what the County Attorney's Office refers to as the Cargo <coughs> One case. Um, before I get into the substance of the item, there's a couple of preliminary matters I'd like to touch on. And the first is that it is often the practice of this office when we have a settlement agreement to propose to you in an ongoing court case to bring that to you in the shade, as we like to call it, mm -hmm. which means outside of the public view, Florida statutes allow us to do that to protect the legal interests of the county. We chose not to do that today because of the intense public interest surrounding the property that is the subject of this lawsuit. So I would ask commissioners in your questions and comments to keep in mind that there is an ongoing court case. The board could choose not to accept this proposed settlement. Even if you accept it, there are some things that have to happen before it's finalized. We could go back to court. So please keep that in mind. Um, Mr. Clegg, if I could also add at this point that I would appreciate it if commissioners would hold their questions until the end of Mr. Clegg's presentation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. The other point I'd like to make is that the case in question has no relation to the environmental lawsuit that was filed concerning this same property. There was a challenge 
to our comprehensive plan provisions. Uh, as the board is aware, we prevailed in summary judgment at the trial level on that case. It is on appeal. The county attorney's office remains fully committed and stands ready to defend the county's position in that case throughout the appeals process. So having touched on those preliminary issues, I'd like to talk a little bit about the history of this case. And I have to be careful what we say because there is an outstanding ongoing litigation, but it's important to put these things on the record so that the board and the viewing public understands what the settlement agreement does. The case relates back to a 2004 <coughs> preliminary site plan approval for a portion of the Long Bar Point property. Long Bar Point is actually a collection of parcels. The Northwest parcel is referred to as Parcel F. And in 2004, the board approved a substantial multifamily high-rise development on that property. A couple of years later, in 2006, the site plan approval came back to the board and shortly thereafter, a local development agreement or LDA to put in place a negotiated approach to building El Conquistador Parkway. That is a road that did not exist at the time. It's there today. It tra traverses the frontage of Long Bar Point and separates it from the parcel or property that we now call the Lake Flores property. That approach that was worked out in the PSP approval and the LDA did a couple of things. It <clears throat> granted the developer what was referred to as a capacity reservation for concurrency, not just for parcel F, but for all of Long Bar Point, for more than 1,600 units of residential <coughs> development. It also provided <coughs> that the developers would dedicate the right of way along the entire length of the property for the construction of Elcon and waive impact fee credits. And it provided that they would build Elcon at their expense and waive impact fee credits for that as well. Then by 2008, it came back to the board because things hadn't gone very well. There was a dramatic downturn in the residential real estate market. The road construction had not begun and development of the property had not begun. So this board, at the request of the applicant, made some changes to the preliminary site plan approval and the LDA. They extended the deadlines for building everything, broadened the scope of the capacity reservation for concurrency, and in exchange for that, the developer added a commitment to dedicate pond sites as well as the right-of-way and waive impact fee credits. And a commitment was made that if the county chose to advance the construction of the road with public dollars and go ahead and build it, that the developer would reimburse the county for the cost of that when the property developed through a per unit payment. Each time the developer sold a unit, they'd pay a small amount of the cost of building the road. Very unique. We don't have any other LDAs or development arrangements like that in the county. I've never seen it anywhere else either. All right, so by 2010, the county decided in an effort to put as many construction jobs on the streets as we could in the Great Recession to proceed with building that road, and the county did. It's a public road today. It was completed in 2012. We built it with impact fee proceeds because like any other thoroughfare road, it was one that we could use impact fee dollars to construct, very similar to a lot of other projects that we're doing today. In 2013, the developers filed this lawsuit against the county, and they sought several things. One was money damages. I believe it was in excess of a couple of million dollars that they, they claimed they were entitled to in money damages. Another was attorney's fees. And a third was what I refer to as cherry picking, whereby they would be released from those elements of the PSP and LDA that they felt were unfair to them, but keep the benefits. So they would no longer waive impact fee credits. They would no longer have to reimburse us for the road but they would keep their capacity reservation, keep their extended approvals that they get under their LDA. The county's position in the lawsuit is that this was a voluntary transaction between a sophisticated developer represented by council and the county, and it was supported by valuable consideration flowing both directions. 
And commissioners, that's really all I want to say or can say about the history of the case. The purpose is to put it in context so you understand the settlement proposal. The case has been in pretrial litigation for a little more than two years, and it's been a lot of work getting it ready for trial. I would say that both sides have invested a lot of time and expense in depositions, motions, all the things that you do to get ready for trial. It was scheduled to go to trial in early January. This office, not the developer's attorneys, but this office, before trial initiated one final settlement discussion. We had mediated before. It was fruitless. We'd had other discussions. We could not reach any kind of agreement. But the courts really expect that before you go to trial, you make one last good faith effort to try to settle it. Trial is supposed to be a remedy of last resort, not something you do because you can. It's very expensive. Somebody's going to get stuck with a bill, and it puts an awful lot of burdens on the court system itself. And the settlement proposal that you have in front of you today reflects what we proposed at the beginning of the year, and it is what I have been calling the clean slate approach. <coughs> what it means is the PSP would be amended if the board approves the settlement. We'd come back to you in another hearing. We'd amend the PSP, and we would terminate the LDA. It would go away in its entirety. In land use settlements, we have to do it that way. We have to come back in a subsequent public hearing if you approve the settlement because it's a quasi-judicial process you have to go through to finalize those decisions. So what is the effect of that? Well, the first is that no money damages or attorney's fees will be paid by the county to the developers. From the county attorney's office standpoint, that is very important. That's a, a big deal for us. There will also be no cherry picking of the approvals. So the LDA and the transportation conditions go away entirely. The developer loses the capacity reservation and the extended approvals that the developer would have received if the LDA remained in place. And to proceed with development, they will have to go through our concurrency process as it stands today. They'll have to do their traffic studies and mitigate their improvements just like any other developer would. So they would come in under today's rules and have to follow them just like, for example, Lake Flores across the road from them. The downside to the county, the concession in exchange for that, and there is one, we're going to be upfront about it, is that the developer no longer has to waive impact fee credits for the right-of-way and pond sites that they dedicated to us. They, would, they will come in shortly after the agreement's approved with an application, and the county will have to process that and make a decision in accordance with our policies and our laws today as to what they're entitled to receive credit for. Secondly, they would be released from the payment of the per unit reimbursement for the cost of the road. So it becomes, just like any other road, something that we built at our expense with our impact fee dollars as one of our thoroughfares. So really what you're doing if you approve it is you're reverting back to the original 2004 approval. Because that approval, when the, when the development was initially approved, and I was here, mm -hmm. it did not include all of these commitments back and forth on the road. It basically said, we'll pay them to build the road and we'll give them impact fee credits for their right of way. All of this other stuff came in a couple of years later. It's important to state that on the record so that the public and the board understands the original approval of this high rise development was not contingent on this arrangement that came in a couple of years later that created mm -hmm. what is now a considerable lawsuit. Um, I also need to emphasize that no development rights are conferred on the developer as a result of this settlement. In other words, they don't get any advantages to developing their property. They're going to have to come in and follow our rules just like everybody else, and we wanted to make that clear. In the settlement proposal, it does say we have to treat them just like everybody else. We have to be consistent, but that's we're required by law to do that anyway. Um, commissioners. I want to talk a little bit now about our, our recommendation. Only clients can accept or reject settlement proposals. We can't do that. Once we have a legally allowable settlement proposal, we're ethically required to bring it to you for you to decide whether or not to accept it or reject it. The board expects us to make a recommendation one way or another when we do that. Should you or shouldn't you take the settlement? In this case, we are recommending in favor of it. 
when we make those decisions in the county attorney's office, it's a very clinical, very technical, dispassionate decision. We, we weigh the settlement versus the strengths and weaknesses of the case. It's not driven by the politics and public controversies. I've analogized it to a doctor looking at an x-ray. The patient's very emotionally involved. Everybody else is, but for us, it's just a clear technical decision. Is this a good or bad settlement versus what we may or may not get at trial? In this case, we are recommending it because it represents what we view as a balanced result that eliminates any risk to the county of paying monetary damages or attorney's fees. And it treats the developers just as they would be treated today if they came in without all this history, starting from scratch. They still have to follow our rules. They still have to meet our policies. And they still have to mitigate their transportation impacts. It is the discretion of the board whether or not to accept the settlement. And we've briefed each of you individually about the strengths and weaknesses of the case. There are both. So you're fully informed and you make the decision. We take our direction from you. If you choose not to accept it, we <clears throat> remain ready to litigate the case and take it to trial. But because it eliminates those financial risks and because it does not confer any development advantages on the developer, from a legal standpoint, we view it as an acceptable result, result to the case. So for that reason, we do recommend you accept it. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that don't require me to say something that might disadvantage us in court. Commissioner Whitmore. Just a couple of questions to clarify what you said. So we're back to square one where we were in 2004. Basically, yes. Okay. I would say that's right. Um, the Commissioner 16th, Benack is nodding, and she was down here at that time, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking Talk over about there that. to I make sure she doesn't disagree with me. I was actually in the audience watching. Me. I was watching <laughs> the meetings in 2004. And, um, 1,600 units go away? Is that what you just said? No, it doesn't really affect their vested Acidity. development rights. They have a site plan on parcel F right. for 258 or 260 right. units, somewhere in that range. I believe that's going to remain in effect because they got multiple statutory extensions. I'm not certain about that. They have a single family approval on the other end of the property. Right. That's going to remain in full force in effect. But it's the capacity for the 1600. Is the capacity the reservation for concurrency does go away. So that's a benefit to us and not to them. It's an important distinction, though. One is a concurrency issue. The other is what units have already been approved for development on the property. They aren't going to lose the right to develop those units. They are going to lose the capacity reservation for the many other units they could have brought in for approval and had concurrency for. And my last question or comment is the practices that we are doing things today are different than we did in 2004. And um, this reminded me, and you'll tell me, um, where we, we did this in North County and we got, had a legal challenge and had to pay like three or $400,000 in damages. It's kind of like that the way it is today, correct? Well, that was a different case with different issues, but some of the same principles do right. apply. Taking, making them give up their, yeah, okay. That's all. Commissioner Bennett. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really glad to see this come forward because, as you said, and, and I want to be perfectly clear, in 2004, I represented the then developer. Lieberman? Who was Larry Lieberman. The current developer had no interest whatsoever, did not work for that developer, never worked for that developer. Um, so want to make that perfectly clear that I was standing at that podium talking to the board, who I believe unanimously approved the site plan in 2004. I can't really remember. I think for there sure. was one dissenting vote. Maybe one dissenting vote. It was for four and five stories of our parking, which mm -hmm. I don't consider high rise. You said high rise twice. I just had a little All bit right, of an issue sorry, with that because I don't consider that high rise. <laughs> um, but I did not work on the LDA. And the words that I heard come from our attorney that have given me pause ever <clears> since <throat> I saw how that LDA was adopted, that it was very unique. My position in government, it's not good when government does unique things. So um, 
And I like the idea of the clean slate approach. Again, they could potentially come in and propose another local development agreement. Is that correct? And we correct. would and, review that. And full disclosure, Commissioner Benack, they have an application in front oh. of the county to do that, and it's being considered by, by staff as we it speak. It was in the paper the other yes, day. Yes, they do. Bradenton Herald. And they have the right to do that just like anybody else does. Right. We, we but, I, but I like the idea of having a clean slate, not having a unique situation that obviously is in a court of law. So it makes it harder, I think, for a judge to deal with something that's <coughs> unique, that's not standardized throughout. Uh, you said unique <coughs> to this community. You've not seen anything like that anywhere else. Is that what you said? I would say that's true. I have seen some other transactions. Hillsboro had a huge transaction for the south end of 301 that tried to work the same way, and they had to restructure it when the market crashed. They've already done that. So this is one of the few that's left over from, from those days. And we're not the only county attorney's office that's had to deal with that problem. I've had the opportunity to talk to the Hillsborough County attorney, and they've had a few of these that they had to do the same thing. And again, just to be clear, because I know how people like to change things when they put it in print, um, <laughs> in 2004, I was involved in the application, a site plan that apparently is still in effect. I didn't even know that for sure, but a site plan. I did not represent the developer, which was not unusual. Planners don't usually do local development agreements. Usually it's attorneys. So I was not involved in that local development agreement. I, because I was, um, I had to give a deposition on this. I'm stating exactly what I stated in the deposition. So in case there's any question about this, I know people will write it the wrong way, will put it in the blogs the wrong way, but that's, those are the facts. <laughs> Okay, and moving Mr. Back, Manag, I'm, I'm not a planner, so if I misuse the term high-rise, I apologize. <laughs> I will defer <laughs> to your expertise on that. <clears throat> this has been an enjoyable land use meeting today. <laughs> I don't have anyone else on the board, so at this time I'm going to go ahead and open it to public comment. Is there anyone in the public that would like to come forward and speak on this issue? Now is your chance. Please come forward. All right. Not seeing anyone from the public that wants to come up and comment. We'll, pl we'll close public comment. Commissioner Whitmore. I just want to bring up, um, in not regards, I mean, you know, thank God we built that this road ahead of time because for somebody that uses it all the time, there's been nothing developed on either side, and we've been actually using it, the citizens of Manatee County, since 2013, since it's been built. Uh, I think that's when it was completed. It may but have it, been 2012. I, I asked Public Works, it, but I honestly I don't, I don't You recall. used to see one or two cars. Now it's packed. I mean, it's, uh, everybody knows it now. It's a good shortcut to get to South County. But um, again, you still don't see any developments and all the issues that we're talking about. Nobody's built anything yet, but thank goodness that, it, that you've given us a thoroughfare for the west part of town and the south. And, and that, Commissioner Whitmore, figures into our recommendation to you. Okay. All right, with that being said, I don't have uh, anyone else on the board. What is the pleasure of the board? I move to approve the settlement agreement presented by the county attorney's office and to authorize execution of same. Is there a second? I'll second it. We have a motion by Commissioner Benack, a second by Commissioner Whitmore. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. It passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chris, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, moving right along. Well, we're done. I'm our, almost, up. almost. Oh. Um, I'm going to go ahead at this point and open up con uh, citizen comments for future agenda items. Is there anyone that would like to come forward on future agenda items? Not seeing anyone, we'll close uh, citizen comments and we'll go to commissioner comments. Commissioner Bussell, why don't we start with you, sir? I don't really have anything. All right, Commissioner Smith. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to bring this issue up because um, <coughs> uh, Commissioner DeSabatino had um, brought it up at the Civic Center when we were discussing the um, impact fee. Uh, with the school board, and I don't know if you 
read in the paper recently that it may be a reconsideration at the uh, school board, the next school board meeting. Um, if a reconsideration is taken up, uh, I want to know through legal counsel what effect would that have on what we, the action that we took, uh, and could they reconsider at their next meeting? Commissioner, or Madam Chair, Commissioner Smith, um, they're free to do that, and they're free to change their resolution and transmit it to us. If they do, then it's the board's decision whether the board wants to reopen the process for school impact fees. You have the prerogative to do that. It's a policy decision, a legislative decision. If you do so, the Florida Impact Fee Act will require you to go through the same process you went through to reinstate them in the first place, which is going to mean planning commission hearing and a board hearing. And it's also going to mean respecting the 90-day <coughs> notice period before the fees can take effect. The reason for that is that they are making a change that addresses directly what the fee is going to be in the first year, second year, third year, if they do that. So it does trigger an impact fee increase mm -hmm. within the meaning of the statute. It's going to be some work. It's not going, I mean, we've been through it already, but if that's what the board decides to do, we will click our heels and salute and get it done. Right. That's the job. <laughs> like I mean, Dorothy? it won't be fun, but that's what we have to do, so. So a vote by the school board, if, if it passes, it comes back to this board. And then it's up to you whether you want to proceed. It'll be your decision as a board. Okay, well, I just want to get clarity on it because That's you know, simple as that. It's I've already you. stated my position uh, on the on the scale. I just want to get clarity of it because uh, uh, I had received some phone calls concerning it, um, and I just want to be fully advised on uh, what the legal situation is if they do at the next meeting that, and, and if it passes, that it comes back to us and we make some type of decision. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that all you have? Yes, Madam. Sure, Smith. Yes, Commissioner Benack. Uh, Commissioner Bustle's on the board. Did you want to comment on that? Yes. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't see you. Well, I, I don't. I don't think there's any reason that I can understand why we would ever get involved in this. We have we have expressed and voted on and established our position on impact fees, and I don't think it uh, it would serve us at all to uh, to get involved in in the school boards solution to this issue if they choose to decouple the, the referendum from the uh, impact fees that that's their business and it's not our business in my own opinion so I, I would hope that we would not get involved in this um, on that note uh, mr. Clegg if you could help with that because I, I actually had a question similar to Commissioner Bustles if the school board does change this, it has to come back to us legally, isn't that correct? Because we had to look at it before. Yeah. Is that right? We don't do land use. Well, we have an interlocal agreement with them that says that we're going to, if they, they change their resolution, we, we probably need to respond to it, at least take it up and talk about it. There's no legal mandate because oh. at the end of the day, the board, this board, sets the school impact fee. Right. We do that in reliance on the information the school board gives us. It's a strange relationship because one entity is providing the services for which, or the, the infrastructure for which we're charging, the other, the county, is actually levying the fee. The difficulty for us is that in deference to the school board, and I was sitting there when we did it, we incorporated the language that they put in their resolution into our impact fee ordinance. Right. So I, I have to be, and this is maybe more candid than I would like to be, but I think if they decide to remove that, there's probably an expectation mm -hmm. from the public that we take up the issue and at least discuss it. I, I think it's going to be tough to avoid it, to be honest with you. Just, and if I recall correctly, one of the reasons that we had to uh, vote on that before is because the impact fee money is collected by us. Is that correct? By us and the cities as well right. within their boundaries. Okay. It's a complicated impact fee. It's not an easy one. So, Commissioner Smith. Yeah, um, I wanted to be clear to because, uh, Mr. Clegg, I thought you did say, I, well, I asked the question because I stated that I have been receiving phone calls on procedures. So, again, 
is it mandated for it to come back to us if the school board changes their vote and it comes back to us and we have a public discussion on it? That's the question that I've been asked by my constituents. You already know how I feel about it. Yeah. I don't think we get involved in the school board business. We've done what we've had to do. If they get involved into the impact fee discussion again, it brings issue to the Board of County Commission since we collect impact fees. So certainly the public has a right to, from the leadership of this board, to discuss those issues if they reconsider yeah. what they recommended to it's, us. It's not legally mandated that you hold a hearing. That'll be your decision whether or not to do that because the interlocal that we wrote my recollection is it said that we would do that for the first resolution to reinstate the impact fee. We don't have a commitment to do that every time they, they do something. So it's not a legal requirement. But I do think it's going to be one that's going to be tough to not at least take up and consider if they do it. I have to say we, at least to decide what you want, what direction you want to give us. I have to say, though, I think we are jumping ahead a little bit because they haven't done that yet. I mean, and I would rather we not get into a long discussion about impact fees. We're really supposed to do that in a public hearing, give notice to everybody before we make any decisions about what we're doing. It's, it's a, an issue that's highly litigious, and there's a lot of money involved. So I would ask that you wait and see what the school board does, and then we'll have that conversation with you about how you want to proceed. Well, Mr. Clay, allow me to ask you this question here. Um, if they can change it without us, can they move forward with it? I'm not advocating anything, but as a public servant, not a politician, I'm asking that question because it was in the newspaper. And I do understand, and, and the answer this is... This is the only time I can talk to my colleagues The answer about is no, that, that they cannot change the fee themselves. They can change what the language in their resolution and send okay, it to so. us, but it's up to us to decide okay. whether or not to incorporate that into the school impact fee ordinance. Right. The That's other commissioners that are on the board, I, I am assuming you're on the board on this issue, mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner De Sabatino. Uh, can you repeat that? If if they decide that to just unbundle it and leave the the financial structure the same except for unbundling it with the um, uh, sales tax, um, does that stand, do we have to vote on that? You do not have to. It's your decision whether or not you want to take that up in a public hearing. You'd have to schedule a public hearing to change the ordinance. So it would be up to the board whether or not you want to take their, the change in their resolution and hold a hearing to decide whether or not to incorporate that in the school impact fee ordinance. It is an ordinance. The only way you can change it, the only way anyone can change it, is to go through the full legislative process have a public hearing and amend the existing impact fee ordinance to change the fee. There's no other way to do it legally. So if I may, so if we don't amend the ordinance, then that could be subject to nothing. A legal, you know, lawsuit from interested parties that we didn't change the ordinance. They could, correct. Okay. But it wouldn't, I mean, we don't have the ultimate decision. Yes, we do. Or do yes, we? Do. That's what I'm do. saying. So it would then, if they decide to make a change, which I think we're really jumping the gun here, but mm -hmm. if they you. decide to change, then ultimately we are going to have to either say yay or nay. Um, I, that's what I'm hearing. I think so. that's correct. I think that's a fair way to say it. But in, unless and until you decide to schedule a public hearing to amend the ordinance, nothing nothing happens. I okay. mean, I, I, I do think that... There's going to be an expectation from them and from the public that you decide whether or not to do anything with a changed resolution. But before you can adopt it into the code, you'll have to vote as a board to schedule a public hearing, direct staff and the attorney's office to set a public hearing to amend the, the impact fee ordinance. Mm -hmm. We are jumping yeah, ahead here quite a bit, and I have to tell you I'm a little uneasy about it because there are a lot of interested parties in this debate on both sides that really ought to be noticed and present when we're having a discussion about what we're going and to actually, do And actually, we should not fees. be involved in... At this point, no. At this whatever point, they it's do up at to this them. Point. Yeah, it's really their right. call at this point. Okay. Commissioner Bennett. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. You know, um, I, <clears throat> many of us were clear when we adopted what we did. We did so because of the recommendation that came from the school board. Right. And as we heard at the COG meeting, um, you know, they got significant issues. You know, they've got tough decisions to make. So I, um, I applaud them for continuing the discussion, and um, you know, from what I read in the paper real quickly this morning, 
um, that they're going to continue the discussion. You know, they, you know, who knows? They may change their mind. They may not. But that's their decision. And I think that, I mean, I know that's the position I took when I adopted, when, when I voted. And so I'm waiting to hear, you know, if they <clears throat> want something different from us, I'm waiting to hear. But, um, you know, they've got they have major issues to deal with. They've got a lot of good information that they got through their studies that they did. And, you know, maybe some of them are changing their mind. I don't know. And, Commissioners, so we'll let's be careful that we don't uh, get involved in this situation right now today. I mean, they... Well, Madam Chair, no ball court. could I add to that? Because I, I am concerned about that, too. I mean, I, I was present at the COG meeting, and I understand they do have a lot of significant issues. But we need to remember there's a real clear legal dividing line between the school board and the county, and it, they're the ones that decide where kids go to school, where to build schools, when to build them, and where to get the money to do it. And I, I'm concerned that I don't want us to get pulled into those things. That's a process they need to handle. They're elected to do that. Uh, we have a land use process, and, and they're supposed to tell us this is the money we need, this is where we have capacity, this is where we need you to get proportionate share mitigation. We're not supposed to get pulled into all these these decisions about how they run the school system. There, there's a danger in, in sort of blurring the distinction between those two roles. Yeah, as we said before, that is their job, not ours. Um, Commissioner Bussell. Well, I'm going to modify what I said earlier a little bit. I believe that, like many other items, the more we talk about this one, the more complicated it gets and the more details are, that we haven't thought about. The reality is that it's, we, we, like Commissioner Benack said, we've voted and, and approved an ordinance based on what they requested. At the time, it was against our better judgment in some respects, but we nevertheless deferred to them and, and approved an ordinance. And so until we change that ordinance, That's the nothing law. is going to change. Exactly. That's the law of the county right the now. The, right. the money will be collected or are not collected based on our ordinance, regardless of what they do. Yes, sir. So if they give us uh, instructions that, hey, you know, we'd like to ask you to change the ordinance, then we're going to have to deal with that. Right. But uh, in the meantime, <clears throat> excuse me, in the meantime, nothing changes. Commissioner DiSabatino. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say too, too much, but um, the um, presentation from the school board was excellent at the COG meeting, and um, they could have probably gone on for another hour or so. And, uh, you know, I applaud them for having all the, the studies and seeing where they need to move, possibly move students around and add on or subtract. So, um, you know, to me, I'm always drilling it down, like, don't, don't build me the watch, tell me the time, and the um, drilling it down, it looked like a whole lot of money is needed for those endeavors to fix up a school and move a school, add a school, so whatever, and that, that is up to them, and I, we all get that. Um, but when I brought up the um, changing of possibility of readdressing it, you know, I went out on a limb, um, and I was actually kind of glad to, to see that they're thinking about that because if, on my mind, like, where are we going to get all this money? So we have the sales tax in place now. That would expire in 17. If that goes away, then that does affect all of us because all our taxes will go up on the ad valorem side because we have to make up the money somewhere, so, or they have to make up the money somewhere. So. Thank you. Well, that being said, um, Mr. Clegg, thank you. I think thank you, you answered all the questions at hand, and it's their decision to make. So we'll have to wait and see. Commissioner Smith, did you have anything else? Uh, no, Madam Chair, that was it for me. All right, Commissioner Benack. Um, just you know, thinking about today's land use hearing and reading the comp plan last night. The whole um, thing? <laughs> The, the, the future land use element. <laughs> future land use element, because I was looking for something and I wasn't sure where to find it. Um, it's interesting when you look at our comp plan and our comp plan and how it was put together. And I would suggest if you all take a look back at how it got put together and where where we were and where we've come, because we haven't made significant changes to our comp plan oh. since it was done in 1989. Yeah. So it's really something we need to think about. And the comp plan is written to go out to 2025. 
And you look at how the changes that were made, and I, I think of the struggle that we have today. We didn't have much of a struggle with um, the public understanding why we do what we do. And look at how the establishment of the UF3 was made. I mean, I, and I was thinking, I was wondering whether other counties have gone through this kind of um, struggle that we've had, where we created a large area that is meant for future growth, but it had to go through a plan development process to get there. And the perception that the public has that we're the ones always just approving growth, when in fact it was built into the comp plan to be that way, mm -hmm. and that we don't have the latitude to just say no to that growth because it's built into the comp plan. It's just something that I think we need to focus more on. Um, and, I, and again, I was wondering, well, how do other counties do it? Do they have this area that they said, well, this is the area for growth through 2025, and as long as you meet these standards, growth will be approved? And we've pretty much been doing that, but there seems to be a real disconnect with the public and understanding that that's the way it was set up. And, you know, are there ways to do things differently? I don't know. But it was something I was thinking about when I was reading the comp plan last night. So I thought I'd share that with all of you for future discussion as we continue to talk about the comp plan. Big difference in this county between 1989 and today. Yeah. Big yeah. difference. But again, what, how it was kind of set in stone that this area, right. the urban fringe area, would be the area for growth. And as long as you met the standards, you know, again, we don't. But how often do you, do you read, and, and I understand why, people are so frustrated by the road system, the lack of road capacity that we have, and they say, how can you continue to approve all this growth when you don't have the road system? I don't think it's quite that connected. It's not like we can say, oh, you know, our, our roads, you know, north and south are, you know, we're crowded going over the bridge, so we can't approve no growth. That's not how it works, and I don't think people understand that. So um, somehow we need to look at that and see if there's a better way to at least build it in our comp plan so that we communicate that better. You know, to add to something you just said, talking about roads, um, <clears throat> Secretary Hathaway called me yesterday. And for me, it's, it's nice to see FDOT um, taking such a big part in our issues that we're having here in this area. Um, they are actively um, trying to see what they can do to make the, the roadways better and come up with ideas and and money to move things forward more rapidly. So, um, you know, it, it, it pays to have a good relationship with FDOT. It is a matter of all of us working together as a team. Um, so, you know, we do have that that uh, I'm just thankful for. Commissioner Chappie. Yeah, I, I think Betsy's uh, comments are well taken. You know, how many times have we commented to the public, general public, you know, the time to really pay attention is, is uh, you know, you always want to pay attention, but the, the real time is when our comprehensive plan is being discussed uh, because that just sets everything in motion to go a certain direction. And, and, and in our next phases on how will, we, how will we grow, we're going to have opportunities over the next year to, to uh, make some changes, make small or significant changes. So, uh, this is the time, if there ever was a particular time in our history in Manatee County with dealing with development, with growth, with protecting and preserving our, our special areas, it is this next year. It is so important to pay attention and be part of the discussion. Thank you, Betsy. Anything else, Commissioner Burnett? Nope. All right, then we'll start down. Commissioner Whitmore. Uh, no, I don't have anything to say except uh, every city in Manatee County has a comp plan. <laughs> Even the city of Bradenton Beach that has 900 to 1,000 residents had to do the same thing as Manatee County. And we had to project to 2025 too. So this is your Bible for your chartered governments. And that's how we always stressed it in, um, in our cities that the land development code always followed the Bible. And um, so... You're yeah. absolutely right. This was done in 89. <laughs> and what did I spark all these comments? I know. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, we've always, at least on the cities, with that is our holy grail there. We don't touch the comp plan. And if we do, it's very serious, just like John said. So that's all. On I, that I've note, sparked a bunch of buttons. Sorry. Yes, Commissioner Whitmore. Commissioner Smith. 
We have time to kill. <laughs> the comp plan is the comp plan. You know, however, you know, when you talk about 1989, and, and I think my colleagues have mentioned that time have changed. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the millenniums now. We're not the same county. We have affordable houses. Uh, the uh, we have all these issues now that's complex. Um, people live different. Uh, we have transportation issues, and the comp plan must be able to address all these issues, or the comp plan ain't worth a piece of paper it's on. Right. That's why you have amendments. And so this is something that we're going to have to look into if we're going to move to the 21st century, that the comp plan must govern Manatee County government, but it must be something that we can carry out. What good is a comp plan if we can't carry out anything in it? Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Chappie. Yeah, I just want to... Um, Add to my comments, uh, just real quick. <clears throat> when I talk about paying attention and how everybody needs to, I, I think it's important to really understand that during the county's process, we need to be ta paying attention to what's happening in the cities with their comprehensive plans, and the cities need to be paying attention and be part of our discussion with the counties. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the issues that are taking place in the city of Bradenton are are major challenges, uh, and, and we're all in this together. We all need to work together on this stuff and understand the needs of our, of our cities, our municipalities, and of the unincorporated areas. If we don't work together, then to me, we're not succeeding. We need to come out of our silos and work together. Right. You know, I want to add something, something to that. You know, people talk about us approving developments all the time, and even commissioners that have been on this board previously, and, and the bottom line is, you know, we haven't mentioned the growth uh, management bill of 2011. That had a big effect on what we can do and can't do. So uh, just because maybe this board years ago did this doesn't mean that we can do it today. So laws change all the time, state and federal. So mm -hmm. Commissioner Bennett. Yeah, and I'm glad um, Carol said that because, honestly, there haven't been that many comp plan changes. I encourage you mm -hmm. to also look. Staff will give you a list because they have to maintain a list. State requires us to maintain a list of the comp plan changes. And there have not been significant changes in the land use map made through comp plan changes. And that's a perception that right. is incorrect in the public. You know, they say, if you <coughs> stick to your plan, they don't realize when we approve these rezones, we are sticking to our plan. And that's very difficult to understand, and I get that, the difference between the comp plan and the zoning ordinance. But when we change a site from Agriculture, I think we did one today, agriculture to residential, it's because it's consistent with the comp plan. Exactly. So again, it's something that's very hard to um, understand. And, I, and to John's comment about um, city communication, that's, that's really a great comment. Mm -hmm. And you know, thanks to the hard work of people like John and Carol that attend these meetings, we have probably some of the best communication going with the cities and the island cities I think um, that's a good thing, you know, and we should take advantage of that, why we have this good communication, and, and you guys are keeping in touch and keeping us informed of what's going on out at the cities. You know, I, th I think when we had the COG meeting, it was clear that there'd been good communication, and I, I met with both the mayors last week, both two of the three island mayors I met with last week, um, to talk about some of the issues. And then I did want to mention, because you mentioned millennials, I forgot to mention that I did attend the millennial conference. <laughs> it was so much fun. I'm sorry you guys didn't go. <laughs> and it started out, JT started out just blaring Saw him yesterday. the music, yeah. first thing in the morning, you know, <laughs> which okay. I mean, got, got everybody up and dancing. Yeah. Yep, yeah. <laughs> it was great. Had a great presentation from Jeff from the South Florida Museum on placemaking. I stayed for that. I was so impressed. And then I said I was going to come back. I went to the Jigs Landing thing, and then I said I was going to come back for the housing discussion, and I'm so glad I was there. They were so passionate about housing. I mean, shouting from the audience, just, um, you know, they're frustrated. Those young folks are frustrated, and they were, they were kind of on the tack mode with our representative developers up there. But I think there was some good advice um, given to them that, you know, look, maybe you shouldn't be looking to buy a new home in a new community out east. Maybe you should have been investing in the urban core, in the village of the arts, oh. in the Wares Creek neighborhood. Maybe you should be investing in buying those homes and fixing them up. I thought that was great advice. But it, um, I'm sorry you guys Thank couldn't you. all make it. I'm How really glad that I went. I'm just saying. It represents all the counties. Yeah. So. How many but, attended? 
Um, gosh, sure, I don't know. Full? No, it wasn't full, but it, for a first time event, it was pretty good. A lot of kids from Sarasota, I'm going to call them kids. Uh -huh. A lot of young folks from Sarasota were there. I was really impressed um, that they were able to do it regionally. And again, it was a first time event, but, and I heard they did a financial discussion, which um, some of the folks there told me was excellent, good. you know, about how to plan your finances. I didn't even think about that. They had a room set up, they had Microsoft, had games. How cool was that, that the kids could all sit there in, in between sessions and play video games? I mean, I was really glad I was there. Um, Ed was there, and Angel was there. So when we had the panel, it looked like that was the way it was supposed to be, because I told Angel to come sit with us, and Ed was there. So they were able to ask us all three questions. So I was really glad it was there. It was fun. Good. That's I forgot it. where we were. Sorry. <laughs> I know we're, 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 we're at Carol. I want to oh. respond to some comments before you. Oh, go ahead, Commissioner okay. Bussell. I think uh, some of the comments that have been made are very, very good reasons why the accord needs to be reaffirmed. I was going to bring board. that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to bring that up and maybe modify. I, I would encourage us to pass a resolution that says that we reaffirm the, no. the no. spirit and principles of the accord. That. <laughs> work session. No. Absolutely. Because, <coughs> because uh, that back at the time, the relationship was not all that good. We know that. Uh, well, I was going to bring the accord up under uh, commissioner comments when it's my turn. Um, you know, that was signed, I think, back in 2003. Mm -hmm. And it's time that we take a look at it as a group and, and see if there's any changes to be made. I, I wouldn't, at this point, favor just, you know, putting our name down on it and moving forward. I'd, I'd rather look at it and have some discussion before we do that. I think it would behoove us to get more familiar the more we with discuss what's in it, it, the more complicated it gets and the more... <laughs> well, that's what it's about. And unfortunately, it affects the county sometimes in many ways. And, you know, constituents have spoken on that. We need to kind of know what we're talking about there, all of us together. Yeah. Uh, hold on, Commissioner Benack. Yeah, there's no way that I would affirm the accord in its current um, writing. I mean, I, I participated in accord meetings, <laughs> and nobody goes by what it says. No, it wasn't followed, so why would you reaffirm that? Mm -hmm. No, it needs to be tweaked. We're going to have to have a committee. I hate to say, I know we don't like to do things by committee, but um, I think, um, who was Jonathan Davis brought it up? Who brought it up? Was it? No, it wasn't Jonathan no, Davis. it was, it was Brian, um, Williams. Williams. Brian Williams. Brian Williams brought, brought it up because of the frustration that we experienced at the last Accord meeting that, you know, it says that the city won't adopt a comp plan amendment if there's an rejection. Hmm. That That's wasn't a problem. Um, no, it, it needs... I think it's a good working document, but it needs some real tweaking, and I think that's why he brought it up. And on that note, we aren't, we aren't following it. Yeah. Mm -mm. Jean Gallo and I are going to uh, get together and have some conversation and set something up for discussion so that we're all looking at this. Are you on the accord? Uh, yes, as chair. Um, you Commissioner to talk? Whitmore. Is he on the accord? Who? Jean Gallo. Yeah, I think he's the chair. So are you allowed to talk outside the accord? I don't know. I'm the not court, going. No, the accord oh. is an interlocal agreement. Not That's sunshine. it. It doesn't have any statutory authority. Okay. And it's just Make basically sure. a working yeah. document. You have it in your document. The, I have it here. the cities, not just. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, there's frustration, I think, from the island mayors when they go to those meetings. You know, like, what are we here for? But oh, you're right. I mean, it's a, it's an opportunity. I don't remember the reasons that they were there. Uh, in the no, first that's place, probably well, I do. <laughs> can, yeah, and, and and wait a minute before back to Robin's point. You can rest assured, when Sunshine gets involved, I'm not taking any chances. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Commissioner Whitmore, and it's passionate from three of us because we were here when. Uh, in 16 years on the island, I had three times where a county commissioner came to any of the city meetings. And um, so this accord, and then the county was going to charter the chartered governments into the, make it a chartered uh, county. So that's the, as you all know, that's what happened. But I totally agree that it needs to be cleaned up. But let me tell you, it took us maybe a year, guys, or a year and a half because all the city's attorneys had to have input with the county and it took so long and there had to be compromise which is fine but i totally agree that it needs to be updated for today the way because we are working good today but it's right if it's not a working document it's kind of a joke and unfortunately all the mayors are new out there and they don't know the history of why we did that or the other cities have new mayors except wayne so anyway i think it's good that um I, I agree that we need to look at it. But again, just remember, 
all the attorneys and the counties will get together and do this. Well, after that we being come said, I, I want everyone to remember that when the accord starts affecting the county as a whole, mm -hmm. the residents of this county as a whole, it's not just about the cities, it's not about the islands, it's about the whole county. And that makes it extremely important in today's world to make sure that we have good discussion and that we're where we need to be. Uh, Mr. Barnott, did you want to make any comment on that, sir? And as he's coming down, they are the residents. You're right. It's the whole county. The whole county. Just briefly, Madam Chair, you know, there was some discussion, brief discussion at the COG meeting about the accord. But from a staff standpoint, we're not sure where anybody wants to go with this thing. <laughs> we know. <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed listening to this conversation. I have a little bit more idea. If you would like to have a work session on it, please motion that mm -hmm. and, you know, we'll establish or set up a, a work session uh, to get your thoughts, ideas, where you want to go. I know um, Bill Clegg is very interested in, you know, helping us with this thing, but that's where we are today. Thank you. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, um, Mr. Barnard, I think he's, he's correct. That's what we need to really do. Uh, the court is the court, but when it becomes uh, a court that basically kind of government can't question anything, that's where I have issues. Or if you question something, you're trying to stop some. Um, we represent. Well, it doesn't make a difference. It don't make a difference right. what you're saying. You know, where it does when we're dealing with our uh, people that live outside the uh, city limits. And, it, it, you know, so it needs to be looked at. We don't ask questions being facetious of the issue of questioning some, but we just trying to inform our constituents on why something is changing. And I think we have a right to do that. Uh, we're not trying to dictate or tell any city government, I was a city commissioner, and I don't, you know, we need to stay out of it, but we do have a physical responsibility to articulate the court to our constituents when they want to know why are you doing this and why are you doing that. And so, and it needs to be more of a complex issue of dealing with the makeup of that accord. How do you rotate the chair? I just don't know. It, there's no rules of engagements. It's very, uh, the accord is, is really not detailed at all. And so those are the things that needs to be addressed. And, and, and I think we do need a, an accord. But at the same time, we need to make sure the rules and regulation protects everyone in Manatee County. Madam Chair, I think we have a consensus for our workshop. Mm -hmm. um, if it would be okay with the board, I would rather wait and perhaps look at this in our next meeting, give me a chance to, um, you know, make some communication sure. first yeah. as chair, and then we'll bring it back because it won't do us any good if we don't really know where we are. So if you don't mind. But the idea that we're going to have discussion. a workshop. Right, right. In the we future. will in the future, absolutely. We're going to need to, we have to, and it goes without saying. Um, Okay. Commissioner De uh, A couple things. Unbelievable meeting today. Um, when we discussed earlier about the parish thing and needed bringing more businesses out there, um, I'm relating this to I was just out at the port last week because I had to renew my pass and my TWIC okay. card. And I stopped in at the new Circle K or whatever on the east side mm -hmm. going up to the mm -hmm. northeast. It Maxwell. was Act. like ants to a Act. crumb. They were giving stuff away. The trucks were lined up because they have their own lanes for gas. Yeah. And they were stacked up there. That place is a beehive. It's always that way. Unbelievable. And then when I got to the port, mm -hmm. um, same thing. The trucks were lined up. I was inside. The people were lined up. So I've spoken with Mr. Bucaris about possibly during peak hours adding more support up there because the people, time is money for, for these truckers, and they have a specific amount of time that they can be on the road. So this is a port issue. But I just wanted to bring up that, you know, you build it. They're going. They're coming to it. And um, it, it was just so exciting to see all the activity out that way where there was nothing before. Uh, riding around South County uh, over the last couple of days, and I actually sent an email to Carlos Baruf and telling him, wow, his new community is off at of Talavast. 
Yes. Oh. And that he's working on What's with David Wick University okay. Village. Villages. Village. Village. There's two. There's two names there. So next to each other. They are beautiful. They are twins. They are the landscaping is beautiful. The lakes that they created, the gating. I, I sent him an email. I copied a, a couple other um, people in the community telling him what a great job he did. He immediately responded that thanking me for taking the time and uh, quality, quality projects they're doing. And I thanked him for investing and believing in South County and to keep up the good work. So um, that was really uh, a, a good uh, day. And, and your racetrack. That racetrack at, at Pearl and... Um, 41. 41. That's Beehive, and there's a couple more at um, 70 and 30th, mm -hmm. and um, there's another one coming out a little bit past that. The Aldi that's going up, the Walmart, the is it going to be a racetrack there at the corner or a Wawa? I think it's Wawa. 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 I mean, they are just booking it, and they are really, uh, that whole area is just coming around. Um, Mary Lou Moore from Garden Lakes, we had that uh, re rezone, or just a new plot a couple of weeks ago with Garden Lakes, and she wants me to come over because they're concerned about traffic, but, um, you know, we've already approved that, and we approved it for less density than they could have put right. in. So, um, and I, I know, as I said on, on camera before, that I understand what their water problems are because her house is basically from where I'm sitting to the edge of this uh, table to the edge of the creek. And so I understand her problem. A um, couple other things. I saw the article in the Herald re regarding when Betsy went to the uh, challenges and finding affordable housing by millennials in Manatee addressed at the conference. And um, so Betsy was quoted, if you want to make change in the county, you got to show up. you got to be louder than the people that are afraid to make change in the county. Um, that's why she was there, and thank you for going. Um, so, you know, we all know when a lot of the red shirts, blue shirts, white shirts show up, you know, they're, they're screaming. And sometimes they're successful in getting their ideas across and sometimes uh, you know they're not and we all get that but um, uh, addressing um, their concerns about um, housing and we're we've been discussing this we all been discussing this we're all committed to looking into af affordable workforce housing and as Commissioner Bustle said we can't mandate to a developer what they can build um, and I rewatched the uh, last land use meeting, and Commissioner Whitmore made great points about um, ad addressing affordable housing, how we used to have it, and it's probably still in our plan somewhere. Um, so I, I wanted to know if this board had uh, uh, any desire to ask the county attorney's office for a current opinion as to how we can amend our comp plan going forward to legally mandate or suggest affordable housing when we're inc drastically increasing uh, density, height, and so forth. Because, you know, I've made it clear that, in the, especially in the TIF area, um, so I, I didn't know if that's something that this board wanted to um, have the county attorneys render an opinion on that. You know, Madam Chair, I would just suggest that the Baz department needs to be involved in that right. because okay. it's a planning function. Okay. okay. Uh, <coughs> and can I comment on that? <coughs> Commissioner Burnett. Uh, and, um, you know, and, and, and the law has changed regarding, you know, a lot of, um, in, in at the Millennial Workshop, um, Richard Bedford was explaining some of the um, development order requirements they have for providing affordable housing and, and when it takes place and when it doesn't. And it has changed based on DRI legislation change of when you mandate affordable housing. I think that's something that we should talk about in our workshop mm -hmm. when we have the next housing workshop that we're going to have and the, and the code changes. Because <clears throat> what you're talking about is some of that TIF mm -hmm. restriction that we're talking about 
and if there's you know things that we want to, to tag on there it seems like that would be good to bring up during that workshop right. and get staffs um, you know kind of what the state of the art is on mandating affordable housing I would like to hear that as well uh, that's great because that kind of um, piggybacks what you were saying earlier about um, uh, something's not um, yeah. high-rise oh. so it's high-rise Three, three stories of Manatee County. Four, four over parking's not high rise. Five or more. So, um, basically, nine. Commissioner, yeah. what we do is you give incentives for affordable housing. Right. You can't mandate it or get Bert Harris out of the plane. Right. Only Got certain it. developers develop affordable <clears throat> housing. It's a specialty. Right. And, and, and so I, I assume I, your interpretation I is that you want to use so we, funds to incentivize. Well, like that right. stay on the board. Okay. That's, that's a great suggestion. So that's why we need um, workshops to address this. And I know they have the workshop coming up, but it's probably scheduled out because we can't even get everything into the, the couple hours that they already have planned. But uh, this is all great discussion. On that note, uh, Commissioner Whitmore, did you want to address yeah, that? I sure do. Um, and I what too. I brought up when I was... Um, First came on the board in six and seven, well, in November of six, so seven and eight. The previous board, I don't know how they did it, and uh, maybe things, I guess Betsy said, have changed, but nothing came to us, because it was the height of everything. Nothing came to us unless they have provided workforce or affordable housing. And that's when I made the comments then, because I don't know how they did it. Um, and it's probably because we did give incentives of some type, yeah, and you were here, Sarah. Yeah, either impact the incentives or mm -hmm. other incentives and they had to enter into a land use restriction okay. agreement to limit to require that full of housing for a period of years and, and how come we don't abatements. how come we haven't been doing that because the laws changed it's voluntary the developer is voluntarily yeah. right. well I know our commissioners used to say don't come before us unless you have something in it and everything yeah. was at the well, height of market I, now, in the okay. oh, it was very disappointed we had their arms behind their back I mean I was up here and I and I thought, well, are these the rules? Is this black and white? And they go, no. And, and they go, well, if we don't do it, it's not going to get approved. And I don't well, think that's yeah. the way that, to do wait, it. Yeah, exactly. This is also a, a question that we need for the city. So let, let's keep moving forward. Commissioner Smith. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. You know, the um, thing about affordable houses, um, we're, we're documenting workshops on the need for affordable housing. And certainly it, it comes a time where the <coughs> County attorney needs to sooner than later uh, educate us on federal statutes that govern affordable houses. I keep hearing the same thing: what we can't do, or what we can't ask anyone to do. They may not have a fundamental responsibility on affordable housing, but we do collectively as a governing body. There's nothing with rezoning if someone asks you to do something was rezoning land and property that you can't ask for affordable housing to be part of it on conditions of us asking for this variance that you're talking about. That's done all the time in government. Question is, can it be mandated? You don't have to support it. Uh, you don't have to support it as an individual commissioner. No, and that's I, not what I'm saying. What I'm right. saying is, you know, is it something that we can quote unquote mandate a builder to do? that they have to do it. That's the question, I think. Builders ask us all the time for variances and rezone based on this here. We don't have an obligation to give it to them unless they do right. something that we ask of them to include the, the county to be involved with affordable houses. What we're doing is documenting the fact that we have a need, we have a desire, and we have people on waiting lists. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, and I've said this over and over again, that someone's going to say, okay, Manatee County, we're going to mandate that you do it. You keep saying what a developer can't do. You need incentives in place. Who's the people building affordable houses in Manatee County that you have documented that's going to build a certain number of houses? We can continue to talk about affordable houses. Uh, it, we've had workshops. You've had a young lady come down here uh, who spoke, say you got to have someone serious about affordable houses. So certainly as we move forward, this issue is going to get more complex is going to get worse. So what I ask my colleagues to do is that we do involve all get the church staff, the county attorneys on federal laws that govern affordable houses. Uh, I'm not in the business of uh, forcing anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. But I, as a commission, don't have to support what they're doing if they don't. We have asked people in city government with houses, 
put a certain limit of stuff based on rezoning, but they don't get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have the responsibility to do it. They may not, but we have to do something because we're not in the business of building houses. Mm -hmm. and I'd like to say that there's going to be some built out east here very soon. Commissioner Benack. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm very troubled by what I'm hearing. Uh, and I told you, I read the comp plan. We have to go by our comp plan. It is the law. When rezonings come forward, we can't mandate before we grant a rezoning that's consistent with the comp plan that they provide affordable housing. That's not what the law says. If the law says that, that's news to me, and I want to hear about it. And I've heard Commissioner Smith say over and over again that we have federal responsibility to provide housing, affordable housing. I'm not aware of that. I want proof. If that's true, I want someone to tell me that. I've never seen that. So, and Carol said back in the day that the only kind of rezonings that were approved were for workforce and affordable housing. I really wish that was true. Back in the day, when because was that? that yeah. wasn't true because we don't have workforce and affordable housing. It was part of being built. Sorry. So I true. I don't recall that the way she does. And I was in the business, so I'm not sure. I, I'm really confused by what I'm hearing, and we need clarity on this issue. If we're I think somehow that's why the county attorney is standing there. If we're somehow not in compliance with federal law, and and when we grant a rezone, we can now mandate that that developer provide cost-restricted housing, that's news to me. Um, madam, I need okay, to respond wait, to excuse that, because I didn't exactly say that. Mr. Smith, <laughs> hold on. I said as an individual commissioner, Smith, I have a right. Your turn, please. Mr. Palmer. The old days don't apply anymore. That's right. And it can be summed up as follows. Kuntz versus the St. John's Thank Water you. Management District decision by the United States Supreme Court. Right. That's, That's right. why it's a new day. Thank you. And it, as your county attorney, it would disturb me considerably if this board were to turn down a land use application based, based on the notion that the developer is not proposing affordable housing. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Now, um, my office will be happy to report back to this board uh, this is not the first time that Commissioner Smith has raised the issue of what do, what does federal law require of us. Uh, we will be happy. We will now take on that assignment, if the board desires us to do so, mm -hmm. to look at the federal statutes and the federal regulations relative to affordable housing. Uh, but, but please understand that the backdrop is the Coons case, and it's a new day. And, you know, Mr. Palmer, I appreciate you coming forward and, and stating that because I, yeah, that's what I thought you were basically going to say. And, and yet I can understand where Commissioner Smith is coming from as well because it is a, a major issue that we're having. So um, I am going to assume that the board would like the county attorney to do this. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We will Thanks. get to work on that. Uh, Commissioner Smith, I'm going to go ahead. Since you tried to speak before, I'll go ahead and acknowledge you now. Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure that I'm not misquoted my statement was clear that when someone comes to us we have a right we can ask the question when they're talking about design setbacks and things there and we do it all the time anyway are they going to be in affordable houses or are you going to have workforce house um, me as an individual commissioner I have a right to do that and you may want to research the federal fair housing act because lack of housing discrimination if you don't have anyone that can move into it this is why I'm glad the, the, the county attorney will look into this issue. We're not no different than any of the county government. Uh, we've, we've already said we have the like of, and we've had meetings, we've documented the like of. The only thing I'm saying, let's get the right information before us. Uh, certainly, uh, if you had affordable housing, it would create competition for development. And trust me, in, in the city, uh, there were some people who didn't want us to have affordable houses because they told us point blank, we don't want the competition. So um, I don't know why we're not moving forward with it, but I appreciate what we're doing. It's a good dialogue and discussion. But uh, as a commissioner, you can ask someone anything in this public forum when they're talking about asking for a support publicly, for us to support any development. We always ask questions about design, structure, height. We certainly can ask questions about affordable houses. Can we actually twist somebody um and make them do something? No, we can't. We can't do that, and I get that. 
You can ask that question, but we also have to abide by the law and follow the law, and that's where I think the problem is coming in. Commissioner De Sabatino. Yeah, great. I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Palmer and his office looking into that, and uh, also what um, Commissioner Smith just said about looking into uh, affordable housing at the state level. Also, when you're doing research, um, can you just, uh, if you could, tap into what New Jersey is being mandated to do? So. Um, I think that's something new that they're being mandated to do. Um, you know, we can certainly, uh, and I brought this up before about staff when they're having these workshops to look into developers who are specializing in affordable housing, workforce housing outside of our area and reach out to them, finding out what they're doing, maybe going up to see some of their projects. I'd be happy to go and, um, you know, bring them to our workshop and bring them to the table to see, you know, what they can offer and bring here. Because things are changing. I know Glenn brings up about the tiny houses. I mean, that's all the rage, and you see it on TV as well. Um, and that that, that uh, dovetails into the building and <coughs> department as well. Uh, great discussion on that. Um, I have nothing else on that topic. Right, Commissioner Bennett. Um, yeah, this is, this is good discussion, and I, and I want to be clear. I'm, I agree with Commissioner Smith that we need to understand why it is they aren't doing affordable housing. Why can't you do affordable housing? You know, we have somebody here who has come before us and wants to do affordable housing, and we, he's been pretty clear about what it's going to take, and we need to understand what it is going to take because it is a good objective for this community to have affordable housing. I, I, I didn't want to state that it wasn't and we need to understand you know why aren't they building affordable housing is it density is it something else that we can offer because we do have incentives and our comp plan encourages us to have incentives and we need to figure out what are those incentives what is going to work the best you know what are some of the best practices that others are doing because i've been reading you know i read about other places and how they're doing it and you know how they're getting land or how they're you know, getting fees waived, whatever it is, we need to figure out how we're going to create those packages. So we definitely need to continue this. And I, and I, you know, I, sometimes I thought we're missing out on things like tax credits. Well, then I read the article about the um, project in the city of Bradenton and how competitive. And, all, and not only is the city of Bradenton competing with projects within the city, but all these other cities and all these other counties. You know, we need to have an understanding. You know, if it's something we're missing out on, how do we go after it? Or maybe it's something we need to change at the state level. Maybe there needs to be, or even at the federal level. We need to understand better how it is that we can create this. Um, it's not a simple answer, and I know there's been a lot of discussion about affordable housing incentives. I just wanted to respond to something that um, Commissioner De Sabatino said about the port, because I was out there twice this mm -hmm. week. Also, um, I did uh, have an opportunity to, Logistech had a um, meeting of their leadership team here. They were doing a safety meeting. It was very interesting. was able to have lunch with their leadership group. Um, great com um, compliments. They took a tour. I saw them in the, in the uh, tour bus touring the whole entire port saying how good things are looking at the port. Um, and also I met with Gulf Boke, Bulk, Gulf Coast Bulk, and Mosaic in another meeting to talk about what their plans are and some of the things that are going. So good things are happening at the port. I agree. Um, and I, I encourage you all when you're out there to drive around and see what's going on. And, um, of course, we'll talk more about that at the port. But, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, the, the road project, even though it's still a little mm -hmm. scary, weaving yeah. in and out with the um, road improvements, it looks a lot better. And I'm really looking forward to when the interchange is done. Mm -hmm. They need that light to go in there. That's going to be a huge are safety gonna, improvement. Are they going to put the light there? At not, at, not at South, Do South Dock, but the light at the um, interchange, uh, 275 interchange. That's where the um, access is, you know, right, right past, um, uh, what's the industrial park? Um, we're, uh, Miller's Industrial Park. I can't think of the name okay. of it, but on just the, on the off ramp. And yeah, the, on 19. And the on ramp. Yes, yeah, the on ramp. That's going to oh, make a critical. huge difference to have a light there. Yeah, because those trucks are, you know, trying to cut across there, and it's it's pretty unsafe. So those improvements right. are going in. You can see they've got the string up for oh, the good. lights. Good, good, good. So that will make a big difference because there is that's a lot of That's backing all the traffic up. Yep, truck traffic there. All right, Commissioner Smith. 
Yeah, you know, my, my, my last comment on there, and you know, I'm glad that we're moving forward there. And if you go to some of the seminars and workshops that I do, you, or if you even Google, you will see um, federal lawsuits against local and county governments dealing with housing and the lack of housing. Uh, for example, the, the city of Yonkers, landmark decision back there where they came out saying, you shall. And the whole city commission was held in contempt of court in jail. So these are the things that we need to be aware of because we're documenting, documenting our own demise. We're documenting the need, and we're talking to send our own self to the federal courthouse, in my opinion. So this is why it's nervous to me uh, with what we're documenting that we have not really put everything into action. So I just want to, you know, to get a legal opinion on this, what we really need to do and what our responsibilities is, maybe it's not the developers, but I know it's us, because at the end of the day, we're the ones going to be held responsible. All Thank right, you, well, Madam the, Chair. The good news is uh, the county attorney's office is going to help us with that. Uh, Commissioner D. Sabatino, did yeah. you have anything else? Also, um, you know, we all we all read the blogs, and uh, I don't. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> Because you get good information. Oh, I really do. It depends on the blog. Uh, you know, if it's about you, it's horrible. If it's about oh, somebody yeah. else, it's something else. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's funny. <laughs> um, but they were stating that it's not just the millennials that need the housing. Oh, no, it's you're right. It's all age oh, groups, yeah. you know, the, ba the boomers. Everybody. And, uh, and, and what's great is when we have these economic incentives that are um, – uh, neighborhood Services Department uh, puts together and we see Project XYZ and then it comes to fruition. It's, it's just so cool. But they, they also do the analysis of the return on investment and the, uh, the benefit, the overriding benefit back to the community. And so uh, when, when people see that we're giving X amount of dollars to a company, um, and wondering why they c can't get it. Well, a lot of times, if, if you are expanding your business here and adding new employees here, you can apply to, um, to get incentives because, again, the return on investment is so huge back to the county in the long run. So um, it pays for itself many times over. Um, Commissioner Smith, I, is there a webinar from FACS scheduled on Monday? Did you see that? Are you going to? We got an email. I think we all got that. Are you going to be listening to that? I'm going to be on the road. I have to go some, on business. On the attempt business. to do it, I'm just, you just made it me aware of it. I haven't read it yet. Okay. So there's, a, I think, a FAC webinar at 1.30 on Monday if you're going to listen and maybe report to listen to it. Since okay. I haven't read it, but I did receive it. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I, I applaud what you're saying about what's going on at the federal level and you're very... Uh, engaged and aware of what's going on the state level because you know the fed tr trumps the state and the state trumps us so um you know we just have to make sure that um we're all um, abiding by all the rules and regulations and um then um last thing is uh, i saw the article in the herald about local business tax would have public safety benefits as manatee county administrator and we, we had gone down this path uh, a couple years back about having a business tax. Uh, a lot of the cities have business tax. Sarasota County has them. But when we did our analysis, the, the cost to implement and uh, monitor and ongoing was more than what the tax was going to bring in at, I think, $35 uh, a business. So... Uh, I just don't know if um, in the um, Financial Advisory Group Board they're looking into this as part of their assignment. I, I don't know, but I know we, we addressed it and we kind of nixed it a few years back because of the cost that the tax collector had to collect it. He had to um, get new software. He had to get new employees to... Um, to uh, basically administer this program. So I just wanted to say that I just saw that in the paper that our county administrator yeah, I can was talking add, about it. Yeah, if I could add to what you just said. I found that article very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that it was being looked at, but that's neither here nor there. I guess it'll come before this board. Uh, what I did find interesting, however, is that uh, pu the public safety aspect of it. And I say that because 
if you're a business in Manatee County, uh, I mean, I can tell you on my business particularly, and all the businesses uh, on Main Street, you are required uh, to give the fire department a key to your business, which is then put in a lockbox um, in case of fire. And the reason I'm so familiar with all that is because we um, declined. We said no. Unless all the people that might have access to that box were bonded, um, we didn't want them to have a key. And they said, well, we'll have to break the glass. And we were like, fine. You know, if we have a fire, please feel free to break mm -hmm. the glass. Uh, that's a small price to pay. Um, so, you know, there is some... Um, control, if you will. I, I don't know that maybe that's the right word to use, but there is uh, an aspect out there for public safety where they do have information about, um, I don't know if it's all the businesses or not, but I can tell you out east, uh, we're hit pretty hard uh, by the fire department on that so that they can have access. So I just wanted to mention that. I thought it was interesting. Go ahead, Robin. Sorry. Oh, that's it. Thank you. Commissioner Chappie. Yeah, uh, a couple of things. Uh, we had the Peace River meeting in Manatee County yesterday. Uh, just so you all know, it is the Peace River Silver Anniversary, 25 years. Uh, it's incredible what is, has been accomplished in 25 years, and, and we will always owe a debt of thanks to our predecessors, uh, Ed Chance and, and Pat Glass and, and the commission that uh, went along with creating of this regional water supply system and delivery system. Uh, so I just wanted to make you aware of that. Uh, it's, a, it's a great day for us. It's a great day. They're uh, doing some sort of celebration? Some yes. Sort of I'll make sure you all get uh, uh, the invitations. The, um, as you read in the paper today, uh, and yesterday, I guess, too, uh, we had that uh, meeting at King mm -hmm. School. I saw that. Uh, I know we have, uh, we have a scheduled meeting, um, public hearing for the stop signs, or the uh, no parking. So I'm not going to get into it. Uh, it, it the meeting went well. Uh, the, the, the number one concern, of course, is safety of the kids. And yes. that's all I'm going to say about it. Um, mm -hmm. so, and the school is taking some action to try to do a few things for Indian Springs. The, uh, I did attend also uh, this week the second annual joint scenic highway um, meeting that was hosted by the MPO. Uh, so we had the Tamami Trail, Palmasola Scenic Highway, Bradenton Beach Scenic Highway groups there. So, um, they're going to try to make that an annual event. Uh, a lot of the different scenic highways have done some great things for beautification and, uh, and for our community, Sarasota and Manatee County. The, it, it was an interesting discussion at the COG meeting. Um, um, all, all the stuff was interesting. I think, I think it might be uh, that it, uh, we should suggest that the agendas might need to be cut about in half. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, that was a good uh, meeting. Though. Right. Yeah, good meeting. But it was too much. Yeah, it was for... too much. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we, uh, there or, needs to be a little discussion on or that. Or start earlier. We just uh, didn't have that. One or the other, yeah. Uh, so the other thing that was brought out, I just want to point uh, the ferry service discussion, uh, presentation was very interesting. Uh, I know uh, Mayor Sharon brought up the fact that Bradenton Beach, has, we have that floating dock facility. Um, I, uh, at the scenic highways, I was talking, we had FDOT people, and I was mentioning the fact that, well, in fact, Bradenton Beach not only has that, but Manatee County has a commercial barge dock facility at the south end of the beach on the bay side, which uh, possibly could be an, a, a tremendous opportunity for a shuttle surface on the water for beachgoers. It lands you right on the beach. But they have within a, they, just a walking distance, it, and you it have draws seven feet. That that well, I, I was going to mention yeah. that. Um, I, I don't know how much it draws there, but there it's pretty. It's fairly deep in that area, and uh, you know there may be just a minor issue with some you know some minor dredging that that, that uh, could possibly be used and could buy, probably apply for a TDC fund. You know, I'm not sure, but I'm just I just want to put it out there uh, to the powers of be that this is something that. Um, uh, should be looked at. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, not, you're not building highways. This is the water. The highway is there with the water, and it it uh, it might be a tremendous opportunity to create a shuttle service better every hour or whatever. If we get some private industry, some private individual to maybe uh, do that. Uh, right. I think and, that's I, and I was going to oh, say, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Um, yeah, and I brought that up when I was in the meeting. Um, we were talking about with folks that live up in Tampa, and we were talking about the shuttles that they have there. Mm -hmm. And they aren't the big boats that have the, exactly. the deep draft. You know, right. we need to look at, you know, something that could run back and forth, you know, from the mainland to the island and could be something smaller, not that very large um, type um, ferry service, maybe something smaller. So um, they were going to put me in touch with the people that run it up there so we could get some more information about that. Mm -hmm. You know, there could be locations for park and ride. Mm -hmm. uh, some areas in downtown Bradenton, you know, they have, they have the um, um, parking garages. Mm -hmm. uh, Mid or South Manatee County, Crosley has that one area where uh, I'm not sure what the depth is in that area where a barge or, or some type of boat could pull up pretty good size at the Crosley uh, estate where there's parking at, you know, on weekends possibly. Yeah, you, uh, there's, mm -hmm. there just might, I believe there's opportunity to at least look at. There was a study I thought done by the MPO on this. It was, this but it was, they forwarded ago. it to us a few months back. Right. But it's a, it's an older study. Yes. So yes. We all got relevant, copies of it. We all got copies of it. How relevant it would be today remains to be seen because right. we have grown so much. But that being said, um, there's been a lot of discussion, uh, you know, about a water taxi. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know that we need to stop it just at, um, you know, taking people down to the islands. I mean, you know, you do have a problem, as we oh, know today, right. with people on the Palmetto side. Oh, yeah. Palmetto. I, I'm trying to correct myself when <laughs> I say that. On the Palmetto side. Yeah coming across the bridge and so forth. So there's a lot of things that we could really look at. Also, we need to think about how many people seriously do we have that leave Manatee County going to work, mm -hmm. uh, or not even just work, but over to uh, Pinellas and Hillsborough. So I, this could be right. a uh, whole new avenue. I just don't want it to get lost in the conversation. Yeah. Every weekend we have tens of thousands of people on weekends mm -hmm. that go to the beaches. And if they're, you know, a, a, for a, a, a short-term possible solution, I think it's well worth looking at. Absolutely, with all the water around that we have, as it was stated at the meeting, uh, it, it's, it's, it's incredible that we haven't really seriously looked at, at some type of taxi, water taxi service I agree. throughout our areas. Well, and Commissioner Chappie, you might I mean, want seriously to talk, looked at it. You might want to talk to Ed Hunsinger. I know he's looking into that. Oh, no, I, I do know what's yeah. already planned. Commissioner Absolutely. De Sabatino. Uh, no, great discussion, and, and I've been saying this for years because whenever you, you visit any other cities, you go from like Baltimore, Annapolis, and you, you go all the way out to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have state-of-the-art ferry services back and forth across their rivers, so we need to, uh, you know, step up because, you know, the roadways are only, has so much capacity. Um, and also kudos to the staff um, uh, uh, with the bus service to the VA. I got that little brochure. We're starting bus service mm -hmm. to the facility out in, um, is it Pinellas? Pinellas. Pinellas, Pinellas yeah. yeah. Um, to the VA. And anybody can. In three stops. Can, uh, for, was it $5 each way? $5 one way. Yeah, $5. One $10 bucks round trip. Yeah. But uh, if you wanted to get on the bus at the Palmetto Station and take it up to the malls, um, you can do that and then change over up there. So another way to. To get around other than using your car i think that was cool so uh, shout out to um public works on that yes i have one more thing um i'm sorry well hold on commissioner smith i just want to echo what madam chair and, and commissioner chappie just stated i mean palmetto Bradenton, the beaches just imagine coming back and forth going to a, a raised game or a soccer game right. downtown st petersburg downtown <coughs> shopping I mean, wow, we're, we're blessed to be surrounded by water. But that, that's opportunities for private businesses. Private yes, businesses and, huh. and revenue coming downtown yeah. Bradenton, too, and Palmetto, mm -hmm. especially with our events that we have. We can right. market across the bridge. Yeah. Commissioner Bennett. Yeah, and, and, you know, we've got to figure out why. I mean, this issue, as I said, is not new. So what were the hang-ups? Yeah. Why didn't it move forward before? I can remember when the MPO had the water taxi. Um, because I remember reading about it in the paper. That's about as far as I went. But why didn't it go forward? Now that we have some new legislation on three Ps, maybe it's easier to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe we've, mm -hmm. you know, gone past some of the stumbling blocks, but we need to figure out how to get this ball and run with yeah. it instead of just mm -hmm. talking about it. You know, funding and the environment, two big things to be looked at. <coughs> and I think perhaps... You know, a lot of that's been settled at this point. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Chappie, did you have? Yeah, I just had. I had one more thing. <laughs> Today is a, a 
a very important anniversary date uh, that played a major role in my college education. It is uh, the, actually the 83rd anniversary year for the prohibition of uh, alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm not touching we'll that. We'll have to toast uh, <laughs> later on today. <laughs> I'm sure all of you know what I'm talking about. And you're, Wait for later today. No, yeah, he should be kidding. raising a flag. Huh? I'll apply somewhere. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Chappie. Never seen you have a drink ever. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. I did okay. see him one time have a small glass of wine. Uh, no. 20, one time. 20 years straight as an elected official, I do drink a little more than I used to. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> you wouldn't want to tell us why, would you? No. <laughs> Um, okay, I guess it's my turn. I've got a few things. I just wanted to mention that while we were here, there were some tornadoes mm -hmm. that touched down in Port Ritchie and in Clearwater. So mm. just wanted this to... This morning? This morning. Yeah, this morning. And there was uh, quite a bit of damage. So I just wanted to mention that and right. let everybody know in case we can help in, in some way. Um, I was at Jigs Landing uh, Saturday morning uh, along with um, Commissioner Whitmore and, and Betsy. I know you, you came as well. It is phenomenal what that vendor is doing out at Jigs Landing. The, the things that are available, and i got to tell you, it's, private it's uh, a, a private uh, public partnership, and, and it just kind of takes you back when you look at Jigs Landing and how it was originally. We're kind of back there today, and, and that's really... Um, you yeah, know, that's really nice. I mean, to see the, the people sitting, you know, by the water fishing, uh, going out in kayaks and just having a great time. So it's, I'm really excited about what might happen at Jigs Landing. Um, I was going to bring up the COG meeting, the Council of Governments meeting. If you'll recall, Amy Anderson really, I want to commend her um, on all the work that she did preparing to that meeting. And um, I know we talked about the need for a workshop on the interlocal agreement with the public school facility planning assessment. Um, I'm going to ask the administration to try and get that meeting set up for us, that workshop, so that we can all be on the same page and have an idea of what's happening and what we need to do uh, in order to make sure that our school system has what they need. Um, I think that's really important. So kudos to Amy Anderson on working so hard on that. I was going to talk about the accord, but We've already kind of done that, so I'll just skip it. Um, I wanted to let you know that I will be signing a letter on behalf, with your permission today, on behalf of the County Commission, thanking all of the state senators and state reps and uh, FDOT and everyone that we met with when we were in Tallahassee. Nick has been getting all that together for us, um, and I should have it um, probably sometime this week. So I just wanted to mention it to you and make sure that it was the uh, consent of the board for me to sign those thank yous. I didn't want to do it without your permission. So other than that, I really don't have anything else. One last time, commissioners, any other comments to be made? Please. Uh, just something that Manatee Blood Bank issues dire call for blood donors in anticipation of Zika quarantines. I know that was in the paper today, yeah. but some people don't get the paper, so... That's, I know a lot of folks do donate blood, so if you have an opportunity, um, it's good planning by our health department it to, is. to um, it be is. ready. All right, well, please note, by my clock, it is 11.17, and this land use meeting is adjourned.